OK, 5 to 3, BBC Radio Devon counting down to kick off. We've got some really big games for you today. Reaction later to Exeter Chiefs women's defeat at Bristol. But from three, Plymouth Argyle at Swansea in the Championship. We've had two positive results on the road since I've been here, which has been pleasing. And Saturday will be a really tough game for us, you know. They're obviously a really good footballing team, but we'll go there we're confident the run of games that we've had and the results that we've had has led to the group being really high on confidence which is which is great but we'll go to Swansea and give it our best efforts in League One it's the return of Matt Taylor to SJP Exeter City against Bristol Rovers it'll be different they had a fantastic result against Oxford on, on Saturday where they played very well so it's a totally different game we're at home we're in a good form at home we're, we're four unbeaten at home we want to try and continue that run for the remainder of the season, so it's a, a big game for us, but I don't think the recent game has has any impact on, on Saturday at all. And at Plainmore, Torquay United against St Albans City, seventh against eight. As that squad's getting bigger, and if we can add to it, we will. The club are, uh, of course, together on, we need to make sure that we've got a squad to compete for these last 18 games, and we're very, very close. Please okay. OK, sorry, Gary, cut you off in your prime. There we go. Let's take you across then to your first half commentaries this afternoon. If you want Torquay against St Albans City, that's live from Plainmore for you. Uh, this one on BBC Sounds and the BBC Sport website in the company of Dave Thomas and Paul Mulhern. Thank you very much, James. Good afternoon. And you join us just as the teams are walking out here at Plainmore. And just before you came to there, my colleague Dave Thomas and I were talking about the amount of players United have got out, which I will we'll both run through in a minute I think we've counted nine probable first team players not available today for a variety of reasons and of course Gary Johnson makes that a nice round 10 as he's sitting in a director's box as he's picked up a third yellow card of the season for debating what I thought was as clear a penalty uh, last week against Worthing were foul on Brad Ash I don't think Gary took that decision too well understandably so I've only seen TV pictures but it looks as as clear as it gets but listen I'm not a referee I'll quickly run through both sides for you it's going to be Mark Halstead in goal he has recovered from the injury he picked up last week a back four of right to left Krask Tom Linson new signing Austin Booth coming in from Taunton Town and Dan Martin a midfield more central three of Brett McGavin Tom Lapsley and I'll take a guess Lewis Collins either him or Archer and a front three of Dylan De Silva Archer or Collins and Brad Ash up top for the visitors we think they'll play the 3-5 5-2-5-3-2 it's going to be Johnson in goal Bowery comes in for Carlisle Clark and Partington Banton will be left wing back James right wing back a midfield three of Russell who comes in Hoddle and Smith and a front two of Weiss and Jeffers and of course Dave as I always say to you when I do research for Torquay United's opponents the one thing that seems to be way too common for my liking is this is a team buying in form is it not St Albans <laughs> I think sometimes you Paul you, you, you're almost sort of talk yourself into yeah. it Sometimes, but uh, they can't all be in form or else they'd all be top of the table wouldn't yeah. they but uh, no they've had some quite good results look they just lost their manager um, uh, David Noble who was a former Exeter City midfield player who's been there a very long time and has gone to Wilston so they are managerless at the moment with their backroom team has obviously taken over there um, but uh, they played pretty well against Yeovil last week the, what struck me when I looked through their team is how experienced it is as opposed to how inexperienced Torquay United's team we've just totted up how many more times have we got to say yeah, there are nine first team players injured or suspended at the moment mm -hmm. and United go into this afternoon's match with what I think are two of the players who when they're at their best make them tick which is Dean Moxie at the back and Will Jenkins Davies in midfield yeah. Will Jenkins Davies is only what 19 years old but for me when he's out there uh, you know he, he sometimes he might not you know be faultless but he gives a, 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 an energy and a work rate a little bit like Adam Randall used to do uh, a few years ago and I think United will miss him big time this afternoon yeah, absolutely um, it'll be interesting to see how they go about it Tom Lapsley played as the nearest forward player uh, to uh, Brad Ash at Worthing last week and obviously gave United the lead quite early on yep. so we might actually see that repeated having said that Lewis Collins has come into the side today back into the team after being dropped uh, so we'll see <laughs> how it how it maps out. Um, well, yeah, good luck. Uh, Austin Booth has come into the team at the back, and it looks like he's going to play right back. So unless they're going for a three, they might well be playing with a three at the back. Yeah. Well, 
Dylan, 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 Dylan De Silva and Dan Martin is the wing backs, by the yeah, way. Sorry, yes, but no, no, I'm just trying to work that out. Actually, it does look like it's going to be a three. I actually. think so. I yeah. think so. Austin Booth is a centre back, for goodness sake. He's, he's not really a right back, so I think that's where they, the way they're going. Yeah, and off we go here. So it's Booth Tomlinson and sorry, who's the third one? Uh, Finlay Crass. Crass, I beg yeah, your pardon. Yeah. yeah, on the left centre half. Uh, and it's St Albans in their blue tops, white shorts and blue socks that get his underway, but Torquay United through Brad Ash trying to build down the right-hand side, but well covered there by Partington. Another, well, you mentioned about experience, Dave Partington's one of those that's... Been got, around, abso isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Also, Ben Wyatt plays for this lot, but he's not even on the bench. No. So probably injured again if he's back at playing more. He might as well pick up an injury, as he seemed to do half the time he was here. But it's crass, as you said, coming in. It is going to be a back three for Torquay United. Dave, I'm pretty sure you're right there yet. The so ball's dinked over, looking for the runner. Brad Ash, but it's a little bit too high, and Johnson will pick that up too high and too long. It's, uh, yeah, as a back three for United, Dave. Ban Dan Martin, I beg your pardon, left wing back, as you said. Dylan De Silva, right wing back. McGavin just in front of them. It looks like Archer and Lapsley are going to be behind Collins and Dash. So, is Collins actually going to play? Yeah, it looks like he's going to start right up front, Dave. Well, a lot of United fans think he's a striker. Let's see if he can prove that today. Well, obviously, the key to United's midfield and has been for quite a long time is the fact that McGavin plays in front of the back four. Just watching a long ball, a long ball yeah. from over the head of Booth, it's going to come to Banton down that left hand side. Another tricky little player, Banton. He loves to run at defenders, does he? I actually watched some highlights here. Game they played against Hemel Hempstead on New Year's Day, I think it was, if memory serves me, Dave. And one thing I noticed about St Albans is they certainly got the decent going forward. So maybe Gary Johnson going with the three at the backs, trying to nullify some threats on them, but. It will be Torquay United through Archer, but it's just Partington gets in there, the captain of St Albans. A team who, I'm not sure how closely you followed this league last year, Dave, but St Albans actually made the playoff final, but a truly diabolical first-half performance away to Oxford City, seeing them lose 4-0. As here comes Ethan Archer into the box, he might get there in front of the keeper, but good, brave goalkeeping by Johnson. And after just two minutes, Archer almost getting onto a through ball there by Dan Martin. Yeah, the key to United's midfield is obviously that, that um, McGavin, who's, who's the best footballer in midfield but has issues with his pace, he plays in front of the back four mm. and does the sort of the libero role, yeah. unless for anybody that remembers the old Italian teams. Um, yeah, so. Uh, and I think he's being picked up by Mitchell Weiss in midfield. Those, they seem to be marking each other. Yep. Um, and it'll be interesting if Weiss makes some runs from there in, to, in behind and through United's back four, will will the back three yeah. rather have to deal with it or will, will McGavin go back with him? Both teams setting up very similarly as Clark tries to come out of defence, dinks it forward onto the halfway line to Banton. But he's heading towards his own goal, turns, gets past Tom Lapsley, Banton takes a run at Torquay United, and it's a run that's going to get his colleague in there, but the cover in there by Dan Martin, and he gets the throw in as Weiss just tried to get in there, almost getting in behind United, Dave, didn't he? But again, Banton, well, I did suggest a few minutes ago that he does like to run at players, and he did just that, and United, good covering by Dan Martin, to be fair. Well, Weiss made exactly the run that we've just been talking exactly, about, yeah. and McGavin didn't go with him, and he nearly got through, didn't he? He did. As again, it's now Booth clears it up. But Ash and Collins will be easily out jumped by the St Albans defence. McGavin heads it forward to Archer. He dinked it down towards Collins, but Collins didn't read that too well. And it's now going to be Partington looking to build from the back. And he finds in midfield Rasulo coming in today. And now down the right hand side, another long ball over the top. Well, already St Albans, Dave, suggesting perhaps they watched the game at Worthing last week as United seem, excuse me, seem to be caught time and time again with balls over the top. But Well, they have been playing with a back four, haven't they? I, I, yeah. I, I mean, as you well know, Paul, I'm not a big systems and formations man, but they definitely have changed formation at the back. <sighs> Um, and interestingly as well, there is a Hoddle in midfield for yep. St Albans. And he's, no, he's not Glenn Hoddle's son, he's his cousin. Apparently, yeah, the and second uh, cousin or something. George isn't? Hoddle. Yeah, that's the one. Well, he seems to be in the... I wonder if he can pass the ball quite like his... Well, let's hope <laughs> like not. His he seems to be in the kind of Brett McGavin role, I think, to be fair. But the ball's now worked out in the right-hand side where James, he just strokes it back to Smith and back out to James. Just inside United's half and then they come back to Bowery. 
also came in, he's replaced Nathan Carlyle today. And all the way back to Michael Johnson, who just thinks it to Partington, Lewis Collins trying to close them down. But St Albans will deal with that easily enough, and then up goes the ball, but Dan Martin heads it out. And St Albans won't have a throw in as it's kept in there by Smith. And eventually Dan Martin gets a tackle in, and it will be a throw in just on the halfway line almost for the visits to today, St Albans. And as I said, it's uh, they were languishing 14th, 15th in the table, but all of a sudden they've put a good run together. Four wins out of the last five. Five wins and a draw in the last seven league games. Yeovil the only side to take any points off from over the last five league games. And as again, Booth will get on the head, but it's not a very convincing header. Tomlinson will need to do a little bit better. He gets it to Booth. Booth allows Banton to try and close him down. Gets it back there. Well, Booth taking a little bit of a chance there but eventually between him and Tomlinson it goes out for a goal kick six minutes gone at playing more United nil St Albans nil not the biggest really... not the biggest crowd uh, no. we've seen at playing more for a while but it has been boosted by one of United's community days where yeah. they give a lot of free tickets away to local community groups sports clubs and uh, it's quite a good smattering of of those fans in the away end. As the header comes in, and that's onside, and here comes Jeffers straight through on goal. Jeffers saved by Halstead, it'll break to Jeffers again, and Jeffers puts the away side in front after just six minutes and 15 seconds, and exactly what we feared the ball over the top catches United's defence out. Jeffers gets through, first shot saved by Halstead, puts in the rebound. Torquay United nil, St Albans City one. Well, the linesman was very well placed to see that my instinct was he looks offside but the linesman pointedly kept his flag down and waved play on and Jeffers went completely clear as you said Halstead did really well to save his first shot but uh, United couldn't recover Halstead then did his best to get back to try and save what he knew was the follow-up but Jeffers was too quick and uh, was on to the uh, onto the second ball and put an angle shot into the empty net. Halstead's gone over to the linesman on the far side of the pitch, protesting about it. As did Tom Lapsley, actually. Well, exactly. actually, Dave... I mean, I don't know what your impression was. Well, I, well, it was a straight uh, ball down the middle of, of the defence, uh, and that isn't the first time it's happened to United in recent weeks, yeah. unfortunately. Um, Dave, we, look, we, we talked the about it literally the best three minutes ago. Place, no, the linesman was in a perfectly yeah. placed to see, and he said no onside, so... Well, I actually I had time to take my eyes off the play and look to the linesman, Dave, and he immediately sort of put his flag he down did, and out exactly. to signify that Jeffers, in his opinion, was onside. Yeah. But, well, so you I, can, he was the best place to see. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. But again, well, Dave, I only seen the highlights last week. We already mentioned it about balls over the top, catching United's defence out, and St Albans have clearly done their homework and they've done it again, but this time Weiss has flagged offside. The ironic cheers coming from the pop side over there, but truthfully... Well, you know, when, when you're dealing in a matter of inches or whatever that one was, Dave, I can't say for definite if he was on or off. No. But, but as you said, the linesman's far better placed than us. But it's the fact that Torquay United have fell for a sucker punch again after watching last week when time and time and time again, goals came from it, good chances came from it, potential penalties came from it. They're pushing that high line and they've been caught out yet again. Well, and you and I watched the, the, the Eastbourne game here, didn't we? Yep. When United were defending a 2-1 lead here in stoppage time. Uh, and Eastbourne equalised then. Gary Johnson immediately came after us protesting it was offside. <laughs> All right, he, even he said actually it was a tight one. Yeah. The point was, why didn't United defend the first ball down the middle Absolutely. of the pitch in stoppage time? Absolutely. And, and uh, that's that's well, the Tom Lapsley puts the, the ball down the channel looking for Lewis Collins, but the goalkeepers come out and truthfully, Dave, I thought Lewis Collins was offside there as well, but that linesman doesn't seem to agree with that. So. Not sure how much how much of a day we're going to get. They're the that. people out there. Absolutely. They're the, they're the ones who are best placed to see. Nine minutes gone here at playing more United. Now St Albans won an early goal from Jeffers separates the sides. And it's going to be... <coughs> excuse me. Hoddle trying to come forward for St Albans down the right-hand side. That is going to be kept in by Rasulu. I think it is out there. Ball into the box. He's another chance for Jeffers. He hits the bar. It's going to break through. Banton on the edge of the box. But United have got men back now. And a, and a toe in there from Dylan De Silva. But United, well, they surely St Albans should have taken that chance there, Dave. Clear sight of goal. 12 yards out, 12, 15 yards out, something like that. Good counter-attack down the right-hand side, into the box, ball, ball pulled back to Jeffers, all on his own. 
I must say, I think we both waited for the net to bulge in, Absolutely, didn't we? yeah. But United survived that, and they're only one down. Well, <coughs> first couple of minutes, United looked like they were going to spend a few more time in St Albans' half, but when St Albans are coming forward, as I suggested, they do score a lot of goals in this league, and we can see why in Turkey United are going to have to get their act together quickly before St Albans get too far in front here it's 1-0 to them probably how's, how's should this be young two. side going to react to that Sorry. yeah absolutely Paul. as here comes Banton but good step in there by Booth but he's given it away or Hoddle steps in should I say unfair to say he gave that away and it's going to come out to the right hand side to James up there in support he comes back inside to the other wing back Banton who's come free but has little think ball through try to just put it through there I think for the run of James again it goes harmlessly out for a goal kick and Torquay United just need to take a minute or two to regroup here, I would think, Dave. Yeah. It's a very difficult situation with the players they've got available at the moment. You look at their attack, you know, you've got Brad Ash, who's, what, five foot eight, something like that. Lewis Collins, who's been in and out of the team recently. Neither of them would you call a real, you know, out-and-out -out striker. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, in fairness, St Albans City aren't that physical up front either. Yeah, they're smart, there was another ball goes over the top of Dan Martin. Dan Martin needs to be careful here. Here comes James into the box. He's got support behind him. He finds a dink ball in, but Tomlinson gets it away. That was wise up and support but it's going to come back and it's Tau Banton on this left hand side now he's got movement, he comes in on the right foot goes past one but Tom Lapsley doesn't fall for that, Lapsley's pulled back, the referee lets it go, Lapsley dinks it forward but it's too far, the referee was going to give a free kick there, he could see the pull on Lapsley he allowed Lapsley to take the advantage and unfortunately for Torquay United, they couldn't take advantage of it, 12 minutes gone here at playing more almost Torquay United nil, St Albans City won, and for any Torquay fans listening, Dave, I think the big worry is that every time St Albans go forward, it's not looking too comfortable at the back for United, there's another ball this time over, Dan Martin is going to eventually go out for a goal kick as James tries to go up there. Well, Dave, going to three at the back, it's, it's not worked so far, is it? And well, no. here we go, Torquay oh, United have got oh, a player down injured, it's Krask, I think. He's gone down already with a, with what looks, to me, rather worryingly, mm -hmm. like a hamstring injury, surely not. I didn't see what it was, well, Lewis Collins is over there telling Aaron United Downs. have only got four on the bench, Tom Lapsley's already indicating to make the substitution. Great. Finley Krask has been injured for most of this season anyway I, and I think he's holding his left hamstring and it looks uh, like it Dave it's certainly in that area isn't it I can see the physio they've only got four on the bench yeah. and two well, of them two, are yeah, there's me and you, two of them, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, the only four people available for the bench they're one short are Asa Hall Reese Lovett who's a goalkeeper Callum Thomas Young, very young defender, and Aaron Wellington, who's a 16-year-old uh, forward. Yeah. And I, I think Callum Thomas is, may well have to come I, on. I actually joked to somebody after I interviewed Gary. I came out and speak to some of the fans down there to gauge the opinions and whatever, Dave. And the, the one thing I said was, have you seen the bench? And they said, not yet. I said, trust me, we don't need any injuries here today from a Torquay perspective. And we've made it to, well, I think that was literally 12 minutes and 10 seconds, and down he goes. It's, uh, well, he's back up, Dave. He's moving reasonably no, freely no, but no he's but, going off he's yeah. got to go off and United will have to make a change Aaron Downs is on the phone to uh, to Gary Johnson who's sitting in the director's box which is behind yeah. the uh, uh, Elikamen goal here mm -hmm. Finley Crass has got to go off there's no if, if his hamstring is, is gone I, I'm just staggered that's the 10th player that United are without at the moment I mean it's just <laughs> the word ridiculous yeah, substitutes definitely happen it's going to be young Thomas coming on yeah. well <laughs> do you know Dave I really really feel sorry for these young lads yeah you know I know people have got their theories on why it happens whatever but these are young boys trying to make their way in their game and Kraska as you said just come back from a long term injury and off he goes already it's it's heartbreaking for the boy to be honest with you 15th minute, United are having yeah. to make their first change. Callum Thomas, who has played in the first team and has done all right, he's only here. Look at him. He's just, he looks as if he's just out of school. I, I actually, well, he's Dave, actually a grown up lad, and yeah, well, fingers you, crossed he'll, he, he made it okay. So it, he's going into the, they're going to stick to the yeah. to the to the three at the back. I mean, that is even younger now. That That has got 
to be the youngest back three that United have ever fielded. Well, as I said, that Davy. Callum Thomas is 18. Yeah. Um, Ollie Tomlinson is 21, I think. And I think Austin Booth is 24 or 25, something like that. Yeah. I thought it was 26 he was you, you, you I knew a better than I did yeah. Yeah. but even so when in terms of experience he's still you know at this level he's got a fair amount but well David against Weymouth here that was when Thomas came on if you recall and uh, you and I were in the interview with Gary Johnson after the match and he came in to do the club interview and he just looked like a little starstruck boy didn't he it was so delighted to get a game well Unfortunately for him, well, fortunately, whatever way you want to look at it, he's been put in again and it's about time he needs to grow up. But Booth comes forward to the halfway line for Torquay United. Dink ball up looking for De Silva. He might get on the end of that De Silva. He should get on the end of it. Tries to put his cross, but to be fair to De Silva, it was a hard one to try and keep in play and it goes harmlessly out. 16 gone at playing more. Torquay United, Nelson Albans won, but for our regular listeners they will probably they'll probably keep in notes on how many never mind how many goals there are it's how many players get injured and Callum Thomas has filled that particular void it was after 13 minutes he went down or just 12 minutes 15 seconds and off he goes sorry Finlay Crass goes off a bigger pardon Callum Thomas come on but here's a chance for Collins to build something down the right hand side he's got support in the box can he get across and he slows it down a little bit gets a left footed ball and headed away by Partington McGavin will nod it back looking for De Silva back to McGavin he's looking for De Silva De Silva's on side chance for De Silva he goes by one De Silva but his shot's easily blocked maybe they need to take that first time Dave and the ball's cleared out the wind holds it up Thomas does well to get it forward to Dan Martin he lets it go for Tom Lapsley he tries to find Martin but easily cleared there or easily picked up by James but he gives it away to Brett McGavin can Torquay United get a foothold in this game Brett McGavin he's got Archer just inside him who he finds but already a heavily populated area and he now finds Booth the Silvers on the right hand side telling him give me it but Booth tries another option unsuccessfully and well done to Tomlinson there he got across to make sure that uh, Jeffers didn't get in behind him and Booth again has it Remember, he's making his debut as well Booth the long ball up the right hand side's a good one to Lewis Collins but that's going to be found by Brad Ash in the box and the referee does put his flag up a bigger pardon the linesman does put his flag up and an offside 17 played United now St Albans one having said that <laughs> Brad Ash did quite well to, to run in behind Collins and get on the end of that ball. He was obviously going to cross it, and then you looked across the area and there was no yellow shirts within 20 yep. yards of, of him. So even if that cross had gone in and he'd been onside, uh, <laughs> there was no one on the end of it. But uh, there we are. Ball back in play now in midfield, poke forward. Jeffers will look to go onto that. Halstead looking to come out. It's a bit of a mix up here, but Halstead and Tomlinson between them do well enough. And Halstead tries to release the silver, but well cleared there by Clark, or well read by Clark, should I say. He gets his head onto it, and now Weiss a bit attempting to come forward, just dinks it out to Banton on this left hand side. In my opinion, one of the danger men. He's found Weiss in the box. He's got support for Jeffers. Jeffers has got it in the box, back to goal, back to Banton. He can't get his foot, feet in correct, and eventually Dan Martin gets it clear, but yet again St Albans looking really, really dangerous on the front foot, and Torquay United, I think it's fair to say, hanging on a little bit here. Important block by Tom Lapsley there to stop Zane Banton making it 2-0. Again, the runs of Sean Jeffers and Mitchell Weiss. United are going to have to have a think about this. McGavin has got, to, he's going to, at the moment, Vice is making runs up in support from midfield, up in support of Jeffers. And he's completely free when he does it. Absolutely. As the ball's played forwards, United got three up here, but it comes to St Albans player and Hoddle eventually gets it out to Banton as the wind picks up. Banton goes in behind Booth and finds Weiss, who is onside. Again, the linesman signifying that early. Weiss driving into the left edge of the box, comes into Banton, it's going to break. It goes back there and Brett McGavin will can't say that was a back pass, it was almost a shot on his own goal, but Halstead kept it and now United a chance to get forward they've got Archer, the chance here for United Collins trying to hold his run, Archer thinks it towards Dan Martin, left hand edge of the box, Dan Martin heading in, plays it across rather than shooting and the shot comes in from Ash but it's going to break to Brett McGavin, but he's too far out for a shot finds Dylan De Silva, right hand edge of the box his first time control isn't too good and then Banton gets back, nutmegs him and he takes it away, best chance there for United and I thought Dan Martin had to take a shot 
what they did. Hold on, Archer. Well, he was on a narrow from. angle. He played the ball. If he had shot and it hadn't gone in, and yeah. Ash and uh, you know Ash and Collins were waiting in the middle, yeah. it was just that when the ball finally got to Ash, yeah. he just couldn't get any power at all into the shot into yeah, his shot Dan on Martin the turn. Now finds Collins a little bit of space. Collins. He does try a long shot, but it's saved just about by the keeper. Not too well. But we have played 20 minutes here at playing more. And Torquay United's best chance comes to nothing. Exeter City 1-0 down to Bristol Rovers. They did win there not too long ago. But an 18th minute goal has put Exeter behind at St James's. Exeter 0, Bristol Rovers 1, still 0-0. As best of my knowledge, at Swansea where Plymouth Argyle are playing. And in the National League South, Hampton, Braintree... St Albans all 1-0 up, that's the only goals I can see and at the moment Torquay United, <laughs> truthfully I'm not going to be happy with it but 1-0 is about as good as it's getting for them as again here they come forward and Banton will be on the left hand side Booth stands off a little bit, Banton driving towards the left edge of the box here he finds Rasulo back to Banton but good interception there by McGavin Lapsley finds the silver the silver goes past one if he can keep this and get Archer on the front foot it'll be a chance for United to break and that's exactly what he does Archer heading down the left hand side he's got Collins and Bradash in the box but Archer, Archer turns back he is so one footed he's just not got the option to go wide Dan Martin gets the ball in Bradley Ash pushes that a push on Bradley Ash no it's not What's oh. he looking for a penalty there? He, he was. I think a hand came out, Dave, but yeah, the minute he no felt way. it down, he goes, yeah. He's he was there. looking for it right from the word go. Ash does this too much. He's, he's going to ground too easily. He was looking to do that from the moment they put there was a decent ball in. He was he was in front of his man, he chested it, and he was always looking to go over. Yep. Well again, you know, try to come forward and Ash has offside there. Just about good defending to be fair to St Albans, but again. Well, that was close, as somebody behind me says. I do agree it was close. I think the lines are made just have got that one right. Yeah, I thought so as well, to be honest, Dave. We are just coming up to 22 minutes played here at Plainmore. You're listening to BBC Radio Devon Sport and it's not the news that any Torquay fans want to hear. Not only are they 1-0 down to a seventh minute goal from Jeffers, they have also had one of their starting centre backs, Finlay Krask, taken off injured after just 13 minutes. But now Dan Martin looks to go forward for Ethan Archer. But again, easily one there in midfield and Smith will try to get the away side on the front foot. He goes back to Partington. Well, I can hear some boos coming around the crowd. I'm not sure specifically what for. No, is that aimed at St Albans passing it around the back? Mm, possibly. But this time their pass gives it away and Ollie Tomlinson will just stroke it back to Mark Halstead. We're halfway through the first half and Torquay United in truth deserved in my opinion to be 1-0 down at yeah, the moment. Yeah, I, th I think they can't have any real complaints no, about the scoreline at the moment. But Brad Ash has now got it down the right hand side, across comes Hoddle and he concedes a throw in which is given to the silver on the edge of the box but the silver can't control it, can't it break a torquey way, it does break to Dan Martin he's got support by Lewis Collins, left edge of the box, back to Martin, back to Collins but immediately St Albans surrounding him Collins will try and get the cross in, it's a deep one and it's so deep that it goes harmlessly out and now well Johnson, Michael Johnson in the St Albans goal has just went down Dave and he's immediately went to the left hamstring area as he well has. What, what? And the chance coming already. Yeah, we want Johnson out as coming from just in front of us and all around us here. 24th minute at Playmore here, and already the the we want Johnson out chanting, which you always feared this might happen if they mm -hmm. fell behind. Well, truthfully, Dave, as I said, St Albans playoff finalist last year. They're, they're a better side than perhaps giving credit for. I can understand the Torquay fans' frustration, but just before we come on air, Dave, you you mainly, but both of us went through the injured players. Torquay have got missing today, or injured or suspended, and I think, was it 10 we got to at one point? It is now, yeah. with crash going off. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's. I, I don't care what anybody says, and I know people say you should buy, oh, you need a squad and whatever, blah, blah, but the likes of Aaron Jarvis and Tom Lapsley and Mark Halstead and you name it, who's spent sort of 
fair amount of times out they weren't brought in to be squad players they were brought in to be first team players now you can perhaps cope with one, two maybe even three being injured but when you've got five and six at your team out I know people say I'm making excuses it's not an excuse it's a fact they were they were brought in here to play first team and I, truthfully I don't think Gary Johnson's been able to play his first team or certainly first team squad once this season like you know that said however to balance that I also have to be fair and say that some of the performances have been nowhere near the level no, required the last few weeks, look, can't hold on to a lead against Eastbourne, losing yep. at Worthing, losing at Dartford a few weeks before that, losing at Chelmsford, losing at home to Truro on on yep. um, uh, on, on Boxing Day, uh, and uh, making very hard work of beating Dover Athletic, who were, you know, in terrible form at the bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the atmosphere, and especially away from home, I know the atmosphere away from home, you know, where United get incredible support uh, uh, on Absolutely. the road, and you know, you, you can't. This is talking United. We're talking about here. This is a, this is a football league club. Hold on, a ball over the top, Collins. And, uh, and the, the Torquay fans do not expect this club to be in the National League South. Yep. And not only that, but if things carry on as they are, they're not even going to be in the playoffs. You know, Yeovil are disappearing over the horizon and winning it, and it's simply not well, play good enough again. Yeah, for, absolutely. for Torquay United. Play started again, and a long ball again, testing Thomas. Weiss has managed to get in front of Thomas, but Thomas gets it, dinks to McGavin, who gives it to Dan Martin. That's a little bit better at the back for Torquay, and now McGavin looking to build forward, finds Lewis Collins on a halfway line. He in turn gets it forward to Brad Ash, and Ethan Archer's in support, as is Collins down that left-hand side. Ash heading towards the box Collins does stay on side he's got a chance to put the ball in there but it's well blocked here by Bowery but it will only come to Ethan Archer he's got support behind him and Dan Martin Dan Martin comes to Brett McGavin in a little bit of space but the ball to him didn't give him a chance to bring it down first time and then he finds Booth on his right hand side De Silva in support but Booth asking De Silva to give him an option De Silva has to come back picks it up looking to get towards the edge of their box but again good organisation off the ball by St Albans and they will pick that up and clear it and Banton <coughs> excuse me just dinks it back to Clark back to Banton Jeffers drops deep back to Banton again and then St Albans again just keeping possession finding all the players they always seem to have a spare man in this case Rasulo and he comes out wide to James up over the halfway line little give and go between those two I beg your pardon it's Bowery not James it's now James Bowery again he dinks it forward, but Thomas just about reads that, but then gives it away to Rosulo. He's going to find Banton in space on the left-hand edge of the box. De Silva goes back to track him. Banton tries a low cross. Dylan De Silva does well and keeps puts it and deflects it out. And after 27 and a half minutes here at playing more, St Albans will have a corner kick. They just have a more solid look to them mm -hmm. than the goals at the moment, did not they? And uh, United are playing some quite nice stuff at times, but... You just feel that cross comes in, up go the heads, headed away to the edge of the box. Dan Martin just as well, he was positioned there. But again, it's now going to be James. He plays it out wide to the right hand side, and the linesman does put his flag up on this occasion in Torquay United. The pressure will be slightly relieved. Well, I'll say pressure, the attack will be relieved. And it's a quick one from Tom Lapsley looking for Ash if he can bring that down. He does, but he forces himself onto the back foot. If Ash let that run, it would have been a better option. He would. <laughs> but Hoddle gets in and again St Albans have it they're playing with plenty of confidence yeah, now absolutely. As, as befits a team that's away and from home in chance form now and for Rasulo to come forward he's got support on the right hand side with the overlapping James who's in space it's a low ball across but it'll come in safely to the arm of Halstead hands of Halstead and he looks to play I don't know why he didn't throw that to De Silva what's he doing there because De Silva had not move to the left hand yeah. side to give him as soon as Hel Helstead quite rightly saw yeah. Hoddle make a, a, yeah. a sideways step to threaten that ball he couldn't do it. No, fair enough as a long ball comes through but it will go into the arms of goalkeeper Michael Johnson who what, he, what, what he needed to do, so to interrupt uh, De Silva, not to stand still and ask for the ball but to yeah. get, get chalk on his heels Absolutely. And, and make it much easier for Halstead to find him Good afternoon to any St Albans fans tuning in to us today, just to let you know Michael Johnson, your goalkeeper after that little scare is another ball over the top and Weiss is in behind Thomas, he's getting at the edge of the box but Thomas does just about enough to hold him up and then a foot comes in, I think it was from Tomlinson there, but yet again Dave I've seen your exasperated expression there again the ball over the top again Torquay United fall for it Weiss just goes in behind Thomas 
but United get away with that one, but it's only a matter of time before they're punished again, I'll be thinking the ball goes down to Weiswell, there's no way he was offside there. No, no, the linesman was was, was all right there, I think, no, uh, Paul. I, I know, I know uh, it looked like he'd maybe come from behind the man, but yeah. um, uh, and and they're not protesting. So no, no, to be fair, yeah, I just it. didn't think at first glance there, Dave, but I'm... We happy. mentioned right at the start of the game, Paul, didn't we, that Vice was marking McGavin yep. and vice versa. Vice has not stopped making runs from mm -hmm. midfield in behind the United defence and McGavin's letting him go every single time. So the old Fair thought, that you've got to stick with your runners. Absolutely. Well, as much as it's probably a little bit hard to criticise McGavin for his all route or most of these games so far, Dave, I think you've pretty much pointed out the, the clear flaw in his game. He plays that defensive midfield role, but he's more like a quarterback than a <laughs> than a defender, a tackler, isn't he? he? Well, here he goes, he's the furthest one back now and Weiss up against him again. McGavin does get the header in and Dan Martin nicks in to get the ball there but again, Hoddle gets in there and gets out of Banton. Nothing's breaking for Torquay United at the moment but in truth, this is because St Albans are playing really well as Jeffers now comes deep and he's looking for space on the right-hand side which he finds and James is out there again. Dan Martin gets back, does well to slow him up. Martin pushes it back uh, to Smith. Back out to James down the right hand side and Russell is onside on this occasion. McGavin does go back, the cross comes in, but Mark Halstead will get in there. And this time he does bowl out to Dylan De Silva and Dylan De Silva needs to get the afterburners on here up this right hand side. That's exactly what he does. Hoddle try to get back and then it's a pathetic attempt at a cross from Dylan De Silva. He just played it in there to Clark, I think it was. And Hoddle now comes forward for the away side. Jeffers is onside. And again, it's back in the midfield area. Well, good, good news for Plymouth Argyle or Morgan Whitaker, their star man, has put them 1-0 up at Swansea. But here come St Albans again, looking for space down the right-hand side. It's going to come to James in the box. He gets it back to Weiss. The shot comes in just over the bar and Weiss for the second time. Dave has to do better. Why are we saying Weiss all the time, Weiss mm -hmm. all the time, Weiss all the time? United aren't picking him up. They're simply not picking him up. Swans. And they've got to sort it because uh, th th this is, we've already stressed how young this United back three is. It's not their fault that a midfield runner is appearing amongst them on a regular basis and United are not picking him up. Now, I, I know Brett McGavin is out there to be United's playmaker, but there are times in yep. football when, you know, your defensive duties exactly, are just Dave. as important as your attacking ones. Swansea now, Plymouth Argyle won, Morgan Whitaker puts the away side, hunting for the first away win of the season in the lead. Exeter now, Bristol Rovers won, and here at playing more Torquay United, now St Albans won, but truthfully, I think both Dave and I would agree that that's probably as good as it's getting for Torquay United, it should be more, as again, Hoddle's going to come forward, he's got Banton on the left-hand side, but Hoddle's ball forces him to check back, give De Silva a chance to close him down, which he doesn't take, and allows Banton to drive up to the edge of the box, little give and go with Jess, there's a chance here for Banton, but a good tackle by De Silva, but he concedes a corner, Dave. How important Torquay was that? United are getting absolutely white teal. There's no easy way to put it, is there? Banton was in round the back there, just about to deliver a cross across the six-yard box. Men waiting in the middle, and thank goodness Dylan De Silva got a very important tackle in at the cost of a corner. <coughs> it's going to be a corner from the left-hand side. It's taken quickly to Hoddle. He comes back to Smith, who's now got... Jones in acres of space, he tries a shot, James, I beg your pardon, not Jones, but that's blocked by Torquay United, but again, every time the ball breaks, it breaks to eight and Albans player, and now Rasulo, left edge of the box, comes back into Banton, he's going to try a little dink crawl, and Tomlinson reads that, heads it away, but it's going to come to James again, this time on the right side, but Collins just about gets in there, and Dan Martin had a chance to break for Torquay, he's now got Brett McGavin, but McGavin's got very little aim for, ball over the top of their defence, is going to look for the runner, Brad Ashu will get there, in front of Partington, Ash does well enough there, he's got Archer behind him Lapsley inside, now Lapsley edge of the box can he find a way to get a shot, he's put it into Collins Collins the middle of the box, shot by Collins good save there by Johnson it's going to break to Brad Ash, left hand edge of the box, Ash low one across to Collins but he goes back in, best move by far for Torquay United Dave, good save from a Collins shot absolutely, should have been the equaliser, good run by Ash down the left hand side, he managed to hold Partington off uh, uh, found Lapsley into the box one touch from Collins left foot drive and a really terrific save from Michael Johnson or else United would have been level 
And again, Wise coming through, Halstead goes out there and gets it. I don't know who that come off last, Dan Martin. Well, given his efforts to keep it in, it's come off Halstead last. Weiss maybe taking a little knock there, but bravery from both. Another long ball catching United out. It's Gary Johnson, who's serving a one-match ban this afternoon, is sitting in the director's box, as we said, behind yep. the uh, family stand goal here at Playmore. He's not even allowed, so I understand, to take part in any discussions at half-time either. Mm. So, well, Here again, they're coming forward. It's Hoddle on the right-hand side now again. St Albans got plenty up in support. Ball now given to Rasulo. Back to Hoddle, nice little given goal, Rasul in the box, and a good chance for St Albans, shot comes in, and they have doubled their lead, and there is Rasulo, a beautiful little given goal there with Hoddle, he drives into the right channel, thinks it past Mac Halstead, we have played 36 minutes here at Plainmore, Torquay United nil, St Albans 2. Gone from bad to worse, hasn't it? I think there are even people who are here in the community stand, here for nothing, and I can see some of them leaving yep which is a, a truly depressing sight uh, things going from bad to worse here United with half a team out even uh, you can almost say even a quarter of a team ten players either injured or suspended this afternoon as a result of Finley Crash just going off and they are being taken apart here by uh, a St Albans side playing with plenty of confidence Plenty of experience, uh, and either the people who are heading from one end to the other down the pop side are just go, trying to go to the bar as fast as they possibly can uh, and, and seek some sort of commiseration, uh, or they're heading home. One or t uh, some of them are going home, and we're in the 36th, 37th minute here at Playmore. Well, what Dave, I'm just looking at the middle of the pop side there where the noise usually comes from, and I don't know whether they're doing a pause none or whether it's some form of protest or whatever, but they're all jumping up and down but with their backs to the plate. As Torquay United are in serious, serious trouble here today. But here is a chance for Collins. He dinks it out looking for De Silva, but too far for De Silva. And nothing at all is working for Torquay United. Well, I can't hear what the fans are singing, Dave, but they're still bouncing over there under that yellow army banner. But I think it's reasonably positive stuff. No, no, they're trying to lift the team yeah. at the moment. I think they've oh taken God, the they decision. To, Look, you know, uh, uh, jo the Johnson out stuff doesn't actually achieve anything. And they're, they're doing what they always do here at Playmore, especially on the pop side, and that's try and lift the side. Which will take some doing, I'm Absolutely. afraid. As Thomas heads that just about, breaks to McGavin, up it comes to Silva, looking to get in front of Clark. But Clark heads out and Torquay United in front of St Albans bench through debutant Austin Booth will have a throw in. Torquay just needs something to change the mindset and the mentality of this game. Feel for Booth a little bit. Yeah, He's absolutely. a local lad coming in for debut for his hometown club and he obviously... Yeah, and would good. have wanted a better day than this good in there by Tomlinson but again it breaks to Hoddle and it will now come to <coughs> excuse me, Weiss on this left hand side he's run the game uh, Yeah, well, the, uh, every time I look at him he's in game. a different position than the last one Dave I'm it's hard to keep up with him at times but that's clearly his role isn't it he's just been given a free roll pretty much he joins Jeffers like he has now next minute he's on number 10 then he'll go wide or whatever he's, he's, he's been a real handful but Again, it's St Albans coming forward, and it's going to be the goal scorer, Rosillo, trying to build his team. Takes his time, Ethan Archer just standing off him. How big a miss Mox has Moxie been uh, at the back today? Well. It just, he's 38 years old, and, it's, and you finally realise, well, you don't realise, because we've known it for months and months and years and years, what a class act he is. Absolutely. And without his anticipation and brain power and reading of the game, United just looks so naive at the back. It's it's not true. You you can't you can't play games without people like Moxie, Jarvis, Kevin Dawson, uh, you know, etc. 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 And hope to achieve the same results. And uh, no, as I said, Dave, I, I mentioned that earlier, and I know people will say, oh, he's making excuses, blah de blah de blah. It's not just excuses. No club at this level can afford can afford to have a full squad, of, like the proverbial two players for each position. And it's not just at Torquay have had the occasional injury. They've had most of half their first team plus out for long periods for most of the season. 
But again, I will go back to saying that doesn't mean to say that some of the stuff that we are seeing is anywhere near good enough either. I have to balance that out. But here and comes. we're not just talking about today, Paul. No, no, absolutely. We're talking, we're talking absolutely. about a whole series over the course of this yeah. season. They've just, you know, simply not good enough performances, yeah. particularly away from home. Yeah, absolutely. You know, United's home record is reasonably yeah. here OK. Here comes Weiss again up to the halfway line. He just comes back looking for Banton, who he finds, but a good tackle by Tom Lapsley. But Banton does really well, not once but twice, and Jeffers might get through here but Booth does well enough there to be pulled down by Jeffers if that was the other way about we'd be looking at a red card but Halstead goes quickly up looking for a run but straight through to the keeper and the fans getting extremely upset here at the moment but Dave I, I will have to say as well I don't want to sit here and be all negative about Torquay United we're watching a, te- a good team on good form here as well to be fair to St Albans Let, let's not take any credit away from them either I think the whole point, you know, if you ask yourself, have at any time this season, Torquay United looked as if they were serious contenders. Uh-oh. And here's Jeffers through, and he's going to be bearing down on goal. Booth won't be able to catch him a chance for Jeffers to make it three, and he does so in the coolest manner possible. Yet again, Torquay United are caught out with a long ball. Jeffers gets through from the edge of the box, puts it into the bottom corner, 41 minutes played here at playing more. Torquay United nil, St Albans three. We're watching a pivotal moment. Another... A, a, a ball which which I think rebounded off a United player in midfield. Didn't mean to. The ball was in midfield and it rebounded off a United player straight through a surprised United central defence. Jeffers completely clear and he's a very experienced striker at these levels and he just doesn't miss. One on one with Halstead and he tucked the ball into the bottom right hand corner like it was Jimmy Greaves. And United catastrophic here this afternoon three down and you do fear don't you for the way things might go uh, uh, inside the club outside the club if this continues at the moment United are three down we've played 41 minutes there's no reason on what we've seen so far why (laughs) St Albans should carry on well (laughs) Dave it looks like the the young team whatever you want to call them in the middle where they're going to go and take uh, position down as far as down the pop side as you can go so they can shout a, yeah. their displeasure towards Gary Johnson who they probably know there they go they're all going over there aren't they virtually all of them this by the way is a St Albans team without a manager uh, well they've actually played better since their manager left yeah. but, but to be fair Dave they've, it's actually their assistant manager so they've not really changed anything but when they're on that form no. why would they and, I, and I, I did say a few minutes ago listen there are, there are pop side fans heading towards yeah, the all director's go- box where, yeah, they're all where going down Johnson as far as is, can go is, is sitting. whether he's still sitting there or not I'm not quite sure actually I can see um, George there but I can't see, I can see Gary George, uh, the, the, the CEO George Edwards there and they're assembling at that end of the stand Thea Bristol I think I can see sitting there to, but we're uh, to, not that far away to vent Dave. their frustration and their anger at the way things have gone this season yeah well we've got not two just a, today this is oh, absolutely yeah yeah two and a half minutes to half time it's another free kick for St Albans 22 yards from goal but only two yards from the right hand side in front of the pop side it's going to be put in they've got one two three four in the box here comes a free kick up goes ahead of Dan Martin gets it just about away but it is going to break to Clark but he will let that go out for a throw in it's quickly taken it's Partington all the way up there and he's got, well, it's a two centre halves now up there, and it comes back to Banton. He gets it back to Partington. Low ball across. Can Jeffers get in? It's offside, just about. Well, I don't think Partington wanted that ball back from Banton, but they are having an absolute field day here. And truthfully, Dave, as I said, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say Torquay United are playing well or unlucky to be three down. St Albans are playing well and deserve to be three up. Let's not paint this in any other way, in my opinion, anyway. I think, uh, as things stand, you, you, you fear that St Albans might well end up winning by, mm-hmm. well, even more than four, uh, than yeah. three. Cricket scores we're talking about here at the moment, Dave, because Torquay United, every time St Albans go forward, they look dangerous, and here they come again, and Jeffers gets in in front of Tomlinson. Tomlinson's about holding it, comes to Wise, another long ball. If that's left to James down the right-hand side, Dan Martin goes to close him down, at least he forces James onto the back foot. I think uh, Rasulo there ran offside, but it went past him and it's now James again another player who's been really busy good play there in midfield 
by Smith cuts inside. They're Ethan doing Archer. everything now. They're doing back heel passes. It's yep. almost they're not trying to take the mick by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, they're just they are playing with confidence that they yeah, eventually United through Ethan confidence. Archer get it. And Archer he is brought down by James and that will be a free kick. Dave, going back to talking United, Ethan Archer my opinion, nowhere near good enough to play in the position that he's been asked to play in. Well, there you are. He, he, he's, he, he's he's watching play a minute oh, more. Dear. Well, well you yeah. know, no point, David, not the he's game away the once, ball but away twice. With a very simple pass. Yeah, absolutely. That was that groan. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're Ethan Archer's look. He's straight out of the Isthmian League with a team which probably our own fault I'd never heard of, uh, Three Bridges, no. and he's been thrown into the side expecting him to play like an experienced pro. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, he's, he's got some talent. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 listen, I don't like to be too critical. This is the end of the day. I know, listen, it's easy for me to sit here and whatever, Dave. I know he got a good goal last week, but every single time when they put him up on the left of their front three, I could defend against him. He comes inside every single time and he's just not suited to that role. I feel sorry for the boy actually more than anything else as Lapsley as he gets out of the silver on the right hand side. He's going to drive towards the edge of the box, try to get past his man. Can he get across and he can't even do that? But that's good defending by Clark. It's going to break to Banton and St Albans will try and build again through Hoddle. Back out to Banton on the left hand side, looking for movement in front of him, which he's finding every time. And for once along each ball doesn't find a St Albans player and Brett McGavin has it, strokes it across to Thomas, he will recycle it to Martin on the left hand side, we have got 45 seconds played of the additional 4 minutes of this first half looking for Ash down the left hand side but just so easy for Bowery there and he just gives it away and Torquay United are playing like a team that have never met each other before at the moment. Good tackle by Thomas. Now, can Archer get them on the front foot? He plays it to a heavily marked Lapsley, who gets it to McGavin and then finds Booth De Silva on the right hand side. Booth this time does find De Silva. Can he get an early cross? And he can get an early cross. And it's met by Tom Lapsley. Is it going to break to Collins? No, it's not. And it goes safely into the hands of Michael Johnson. Two and a half minutes left of additional time. Torquay United nil, St Albans three. One very long-standing United supporter who I've known for many years watches them home away, often sends me texts just saying what he thinks. A huge supporter of the club, won't hear a bad word said about them. And yeah. the word he's used more, more often than not over the last few weeks and months is soft. Yep. And well, I think that's a I bit think, the polite. I think we all know what, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what he means. Yeah. Well, Archer nips in this time, he's got a chance to come forward, that's decent by Archer, pulled back there and that's surely going to be a yellow card, or is it? Surely it oh, is. Yeah, it's a blatant pullback yeah. by four, uh, Smith. Smith. Well, truthfully, I don't think his manager or stand-in manager will be too happy with that. I would have just let Archer run there 3-0 up with defenders back, but there we go. Well, I think he could see Archer then bearing down on the United on the uh, St Albans penalty area, and I think he just decided I'm taking one for the team here. Absolutely. Into the book. I think Dave prevention. as well. well There's three kicks. We're waiting for it to be taken. Not only is this going to be a defeat, assuming that it does end that way, but it will also see United slip out the playoff places, and I think the victory oh, from the fans is going to be far stronger. As a free kick comes in, lapses at the back post, but he was offside. I could see that from here. And of course, Lapsley gets it back across. Tomlinson puts it in, but Lapsley was offside. Dave, I followed his run there. He was two or three yards offside. It's uh, that. When minute. troubles come, they come yeah, in big absolutely. battalions, don't they? Yeah. That's what uh, big time. the old saying goes. We're almost at half time now. Clock's well, been running for what more than 48 minutes. Well, and I think United will what? actually may be happy to get back into the dressing room. And yep. Have a cup of tea or whatever they have in dressing rooms these days. And a bit of a chat from Aaron Downs, yeah. the assistant manager. The, of course, the other problem is, Dave, it's not even like Aaron or Gary or whoever have got much to do to change it, have they? The, of course the, not. Of course not. Which is uh, just run through some scores. Hampton 1, Truro 0, although that was early on. Braintree 3, Dover 0, Avery 0, Worthing 1. Big game there. Uh, Maidstone 2, Yeovil 0, that's after only 19 minutes. 2 0 to Maidstone? Yep. Wow. Tonbridge 1, Chippenham 0. These are scores from halfway through the half, so they may have updated since then. 
Again, for some reason, the update in this league isn't great as here comes James down the right-hand side. He finds Smith, foolishly put himself into the book earlier. And to Rosillo, back to Smith. And we are about to see the half-time whistle blown, and the half-time whistle is blown. And no prizes for guessing what those boos are for us. Quite frankly, Torquay United have been taught a National League South lesson here today by today's visitor St Alban. And it is they who go in at half-time, leading by three goals to nil. And if the truth be known, it could have been a lot more, as Weiss in particular has missed a couple of decent chances. He's had a good game, but he's not had his shooting boots on. Dave, I'm going to ask you the unanswerable question here, but what did... Torquay United do, we've got, got about 40 seconds to trail uh, I'm rather glad that Gary Johnson is not by the touchline uh, in the yeah. dugout because I think it might have sparked even yeah. more angrier scenes, I'm rather pleased from his point of view um, and uh, everybody else here that he's actually in the director's box and is, I can't see him now anyway uh, because it would have got nastier than it already has yeah, desperate stuff there's no reason on what we've seen so far why St Alban shouldn't go on and score even more goals in the second half well we will be back for full commentary of the second half and let's hope Torquay United can make a better fist of it it's not looking likely as half time here at playing more it's Torquay United now St Albans 3 Everyone has a story to tell. You have a voice, and you have a voice that matters. Young people are often overshadowed. There's a lot more perks to having alopecia than I thought. If you're aged 11 to 18, the BBC wants to hear from you. Just because somebody's disabled doesn't mean that they can't achieve something. So that your story can be told across TV, radio and online. I really hope my story has helped people who are going through similar things like me. Search BBC Young Reporter Competition to find out more entry closes on the 24th of march bbc radio devon sports with james vickery we're at half time then in our three o'clock games just a reminder that earlier today the exeter chiefs women lost 22 12 away against bristol bears women we'll have reaction to that later here on bbc radio devon sport and in the six nations latest for you england are leading italy 27 17 with nine minutes left to play both sides with two tries in that match so far 17 27 England are leading that match right let's go around our grounds at half time find out what's been going on in the football then and we'll start in the championship and for Plymouth Argyle the Greens today away in South Wales against Swansea City half time report from Ross Heaton Swansea nil, Argyle won the host dominated possession for most of this game but it was their former player Morgan Whitaker who broke the deadlock for Argyle acute short corner routine cut back to him just inside the box and he beautifully swept it home left footed for his 17th of the season the Pilgrims backline has been stretched throughout Mumba produced a brilliant last ditch tackle to deny Tymon he was only about 3 or 4 yards out Hazard the goalkeeper also denied Yates with a brilliant spalling save from around about 5 yards out his distribution has been questionable at times this afternoon but that moment undeniably prevented uh, a certain goal for the host at the break here Swansea nil, Plymouth Argyle 1 thank you Ross that's what's going on in the championship let's go to League 1 next Exeter City at home against Bristol Rovers difficult first half this for the Grecians Ollie Hepton still yeah, it's been a frustrating first half for City. James, who started well in the first 10, 15 minutes or so, had the better of territory without really creating many clear-cut chances. But it was Bristol Rovers who got the opening goal and in fine fashion as well, uh, just before the 15th minute mark. It was a loose ball, not cleared away as well as it should have been from City on the edge of the area. And Brandon Aguilera made good use of it, smashing it into the roof of the net, left side of the goal leaving Bill Sinisalo stranded from a City point of view. Exeter have huffed and puffed a bit since then without really creating much, although just a few minutes after Rovers scored uh, Vince Harper did some great work down the left-hand side, cut inside onto his uh, weaker right foot and his looping shot cannoned off the crossbar. That's the closest City have come and uh, what's to do 
for Gary Colwell at half-time to change things around because Bristol Rovers look fairly comfortable. They lead here by a goal to nil. OK, thank you very much. That would be Exeter's, uh, if it stays like that, first defeat at home in five. Right, let's nip down the A380 then. It's been a disastrous first half for Torquay United, as to be said, in National League South. They trail St Albans by three goals to nil. Paul Mohern, has it, has it been as bad as it sounds from a Torquay perspective? Truthfully, James, it's probably been worse three now. It's probably kind to Torquay United. They have been absolutely obliterated here by the away side, St Albans. Firstly, James, I'm going to give credit to St Albans. They've played some really nice stuff, but Torquay United are just a team in complete disarray here today, and the fans are letting them know that. <coughs> Excuse me. It only took seven minutes for Jeffers to put the away side in front. As Dave and I mentioned on commentary, Torquay United are getting caught out with long balls over the top almost every time. And I've got, excuse me again. <coughs> it's, that, it's that time of year, Paul, isn't it? I sorry, we, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've got coughs and colds at home. It's yeah. a nightmare. Carry on, mate. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, after seven minutes, Jeffers gets in behind the defence and slotted past Halstead to put St Albans 1 0 up. United then try to get back into the game, but not a huge amount of happening. Six minutes later, the, the injury curse struck again as Finlay Crass, just back from injury, was taken off. Young Callum Thomas comes on. 19 minutes gone, Dan Martin drove into the box and rather than shoot and try to square it across to Ash, who did his best to get a shot on target, but it trickled into the goalkeeper's hands. And then after 34 minutes, a good a good move, seen a Colin shot well saved from 12 yards. But truthfully, James, that was painting a false picture. St Albans also hit the bar, Weiss hit the bar, and then after 32 minutes, he shot over from 12 yards when he should have scored. But only four minutes later, the second and killer goal for United came as a little give and go on the edge of the box between Rasulu and Hoddle, seeing the former get into a good position and slot it past Halstead. If that wasn't bad enough, just five minutes later, Jeffers goes clean through. Yet again, Torquay United exposed with a long ball over the top. Jeffers runs in from 35 yards, shoots from the edge of the box past Halstead to make it 3-0. The irony is, James, Torquay United have got virtually nothing bar Asa Hall on the bench to change this. They're going to need to do something before this place turns toxic half-time. United, Nelson, Albans Street. OK, Paul, thank you very much. Difficult afternoon at Plainmore. We will be back with second-half commentary of that game. Torquay United against St Albans City. You, you just never know in football. It could be the, the miracle of all comebacks at Plainmore, but it doesn't sound good at half-time, does it? With Torquay trailing by three goals to nil. <laughs> Right, let's take a look, find out what's going on around the country then. Uh, we will start in the Premier League. One match already completed today and Everton have drawn two all with Tottenham Hotspur. At the break, Brighton 3, Crystal Palace 0. Burnley 0, Fulham 2. And Newcastle United 2, Luton 2 at St James's Park. Looks like quite a good game there in the North East. Championship, these are all half times for you. I'll tell you about the games with goals in. So if you don't hear a fixture, it means it's goalless, and there are plenty of those in the championship today. So Hull City 1, Millwall 0, Preston 3, Ipswich 0, Rotherham 0, Southampton 2, Stoke City 0, Leicester City 2, Swansea 0, Argyle 1, and yes, you guessed it, Morgan Whitaker with the goal for the Pilgrims. Watford 0, Cardiff City 1 today is the half time score at Vicarage Road. League One, Oxford United have drawn with Reading one each at the Kassam Stadium. That's uh, what's happened earlier today. So a point there for Reading, closing the gap as it stands to just five points between themselves and Exeter City. But still a lot of football to be played this afternoon. Bolton nil, Barnsley one. Burton against Lincoln is goalless. Charlton nil, Derby one. Ch- Cheltenham nil, uh, Wickham Wanderers two. Exeter nil, Bristol Rovers one as we know. Fleetwood are leading Port Vale by a goal to nil at the break. Leighton Orient two, Carlisle United one. Peterborough nil, Wigan one. Portsmouth two, Northampton Town nil, Shrewsbury one, Cambridge one. And Stevenage are goalless with Blackpool. League two scores for you, not um, not County, what am I talking about? Newport County. It's been a long day, it's been a long week. As I was telling about Paul Mulhern there, kept up most of the night with my youngest who's got an awful cold at the moment. So there we go. Can't even read what's in front of me. Newport County 2, Swindon 1. That is the result today. Accrington against Grimsby, goalless, as is Barrow against MK Dons. Bradford City against AFC Wimbledon, no goals there. Colchester United 0, Forest Green Rovers 2. Crawley 1, Morecambe 1. Gillingham against Walsall is goalless. Mansfield 1, Notts County 0. Salford City 2, Wrexham 1. Stockport County 1, Harrogate. 
Harrogate Town 1. Sutton against Doncaster, no goals there. Tranmere nil, Crew Alexandra nil. Should say, get well soon, Rory. He's listening this afternoon. He couldn't go to the football, he's so poorly. There we go. National League South... Averley nil, Worthing one, Bath City against Eastbourne Borough goalless, Braintree three, Dover nil, Farnborough against Dartford, no goals there, Hampton and Richmond one, Truro City nil, Haven to Waterlooville nil, Chelmsford City one, Maidstone two, Yeovil nil, Slough one, Western Supermare nil, Tombridge Angels one, Chippenham nil, Torquay nil, St Albans City three, Welling against Taunton is goalless, and it's Weymouth nil, Hemel Hempstead Town one. Latest in the rugby for you, the Six Nations. We've got about two minutes left to play. Italy, 17. England, 27. The 70s were defined by disco and glam rock. The 80s introduced power ballads and synths. The 90s gave us grunge and R&B. Today it's all about air fryers and AI. Grab a Pop-Tart and enjoy an hour of memories with us. The Golden Hour. Weekdays at 1. BBC Radio Devon. And there's some great news from a Devon perspective in that uh, England game. Ethan Roots of the Exeter Chiefs has been named Player of the Match. Uh, he was given his first call up for Steve Borthwick, of course, uh, making his first England start then, Ethan Roots, and he's been named player of the match. How about that? Italy 17, England 27. They've got about 90 seconds left to play there uh, over in Italy. Right, let's take you back to your second half commentary, Zen, this afternoon. Uh, if you're listening for Torquay United, that's on BBC Sounds and the BBC Sport website. Torquay against St Albans City. Let's go back to Dave Thomas and Paul Mulholland. Thanks very much, James. Apologies for almost bursting your eardrums with my coughing fit there, but I've managed to get over it, I hope. But truthfully, that's nowhere near the worst thing that's happening here at Plainmore today, as Torquay United have been categorically outplayed, outperformed in every department. And truthfully, as I said in my half-time report, 3-0 is probably a generous result to Torquay United rather than St Albans. And I think their second-half performance of visitors today might decide exactly where this game's going to go. As I mentioned to Dave just before half-time, Dave, Torquay United, I can see Asa Hall out there, he's not going to come on straight away. They, they've not got any options to change it, really, have they, in well, truth? When we arrived, Paul, this afternoon, <coughs> we did a quick tot-up. Nine players injured or suspended, and then we looked down at the team sheet, they couldn't even fill their subs bench, and two of their four subs are 16 and 17 years old. Yep. Uh, and that's the state that the club is in, or the squad is in at the moment, but it's, it's just an accumulation of stuff, hasn't it? I think you and I said on commentary during the first half, to be brutally honest with you, it's not been good enough right from the start of the season. No. And it's just, it's just occasionally there have been little encouragements from time to time. But if you think back to the opening home game of the season, United nil, Worthing three, absolutely taken apart. They've yep. given away a two-goal lead at Dover on the first day of the season. Uh, uh, and things, uh, I think as well, uh, uh, some United fans may remember a 3-2 defeat at Western Supermare on a, on a very wet, windy Tuesday night in, was it September, October time? October, I think, yeah. That cost them three players injured, particularly Aaron Jarvis, the centre-forward up front. And I don't think United have ever recovered from that night. Uh, they were properly sorted out by a Western Supermare side, which has been in the bottom half of the table for most of the season. Uh, and, you know, they've flirted every now and again to, to look the part and then not and then not delivered it and then you come do you remember that that when they were absolutely roasted by Yeovil Town here three the score was only 3-1 but it could have been a lot more yeah, on Tuesday absolutely. night uh, and they've they put together a whole series of really inadequate performances punctuated by occasional victories and they are where they are the league table is what we've been we've got I forget how many games there are left but the league table even now doesn't tell a lie, does it? No, absolutely. Uh, and, no. and United, as we stand, are out of the playoffs. This is the National League South we're talking about. This is the lowest the club, you know, has ever been, unless you want to count 
uh, by the time Gary Hours was sacked and Gary Johnson was brought in when they were 14th in this division. Um, and we can trace it back to lots of things. Everybody often talks about the playoff final day at Ashton Gate and how, you know, those disallowed goals, uh, um, how costly they proved in the end and United lost that match on penalties and they've never really recovered from that. Definitely not. That's, Definitely a, that's, not, a, that's yeah. an easy out. You know, you, you, have to, you have to put... You know, more out there than United have been putting out there over the last couple of seasons. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, and, and um, you know, we talk about the recruitment. Uh, they, they've signed a succession of quite talented young, youngsters who are not ready yet to win, agree, reg, win games on a regular basis. And if you looked, if you actually said to yourself, right, I tell you what, United actually might get into the playoffs this season and they might actually win promotion. The next question you have to ask, I mean, at the moment, they don't look like doing that, definitely not. That's but that even if you said they did, would this squad, team be able even, to survive in the National League? Not even League? close, it would need to be a complete squad uh, overall. Absolutely. You're so, talking about the youngsters, Dave, and I'm just looking down at young Jacob Wellington there, and I'm not sure whether he give him some praise or take him a pack lunch down there. He looks about 12, doesn't he? I mean, it's, yeah, but uh, he's, he's a good little player, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and, it's, and, uh, he, he, he's... Gary Johnson, because of the injuries and the suspensions, are having to throw these types of kids into mm. games that they're not ready for. Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, young Callum Thomas and Jacob Wellington, very talented young players. They may well pl be players in time, but but then you look through the rest of the side. You know, Ethan Archer, you mentioned, Lewis Collins, Brad Ash, um, uh, uh, you know, Brett McGavin. These players uh, are, uh, were brought in to win promotion from this league. And they're uh, looking I'm so far away from it, it's just not true. Yeah. It's, it doesn't mean that they have no talent. Of no, course absolutely. it doesn't. They, they, they've got they've got some talent. Square pegs and round holes, Dave. And, and uh, th that's one thing. But the other thing is, I just don't think United have got enough men in the camp. Yeah, I'm sorry. Fair. No, no, fair uh, point. Uh, uh, fair I, know point. I know if you take Aaron Jarvis and Kevin Dawson out of that, then th that's a big issue. Uh, they've missed Kevin Dawson <laughs> hugely all season, not just because of what he does on the pitch, whether he passes the ball, whether he wins a tackle, but because he's one of the very few, if not the only player, that looks like he's going to sort any of his teammates out when they don't do their jobs properly. Just that, that element, of, of, and come back to this same old thing, This United have looked a soft touch, yep. a soft touch for too long this well, season. Well, here they come back onto the park, Dave, where you were having your rant there. Well, I say your rant, you were just pointing out pretty decent facts in my opinion but it's uh and yet you'd have come back out St Albans already out I can't see any changes for either side but then again there's not much point look if there's any changes for Torquay because love it Wellington won't come on uh, barring an injury I wouldn't have thought I, 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 I once saw United trail 3-0 to Rochdale at home to play more on a Tuesday night and win 4-3 <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Ashley Yeoman, who's now playing for Salcombe or Kingsbridge or something like that in the South Devon League, uh, came on and, and helped to turn things that night. I wish we had somebody like him up front. Well, well that, that's when you know you're scraping the barrel, Davey. He was another one of those players, and you said, he did have talent, but just never seemed to be able to keep it going for some reason. But we're about to kick off. United will hit from right to left, no changes for either side. And from a St Albans point of view, I personally feel it depends how they approach this second half. If they keep going with the same tempo in the first, this could get seriously bad for Torquay United. But can United somehow find a way to even force a way back and at least start asking questions that St Albans will not have it as easy as this? As Brad Ash gets away with a handball to Silva on the right-hand side, United get quite a few players up. Dinks it in, looking for the head of Archer, he gets it in. But it's just up and over the bar and after just 19 seconds, at least United get an attempt on Goldith. Just over the bar. You probably don't want Ethan Archer as your man in the box trying to head across him, do you? He's a, he's a, a, a jinky yeah. attacking wide player, really. But yeah, uh, I, at least it was a decent attack and an attempt at goal. Well, so here comes St Albans as Banton on the left-hand side, but De Silva gets back and gets in. I know I was, I've been quite critical of Archer over the last few 
couple of games, Dave, it's it's not so much him as much as it's just the fact that he, well, I think his first touch and his technique's poor. He's completely right footed, but when he's getting played on the left hand side, he's getting so easy to be read as that's a bit better there from Booth. Good tackle goes down looking for the run of Ash in behind the defence, but Ash a de- uh, judged to have been offside, Ash saying he's not, but again line's been right in line with that, but at least Torquay United have been trying to nudge forward, although truthfully the first couple of minutes looked like that in the first half and then St Albans settled down and we know what happened there, but well, going back to Archer I would personally swap him and De Silva to be honest with you, as in swap, swap what wings are on but again I think uh, De Silva is yeah, if he's not a right winger, what is he? I, I, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he's a little bit more comfortable I tell you on what, his left I'd love to have listened to what Aaron Downs yeah. had to say in the dressing room at half time. I bet Absolutely. he earned his money this afternoon. Yeah, I bet so. <laughs> As again, a long ball is cleared by St Albans. It comes to Smith in midfield and eventually cleared up by Partington and it's picked up there by Rosulo. Another one that just seems to be everywhere. And eventually Brett McGavins are judged to have p- uh, committed a foul. Yeah, I think it was a foul. Nothing Poddle, serious. Was it Smith again? Was it sorry? Nothing serious. Yeah. On Weiss, I think. Oh, it Weiss, as yeah, of course. Yeah. As it, I didn't know it was him. He's uh, everywhere, isn't it? It, it looked a little bit sick of one half than the other, but the referee was very close to it. I thought he just about got that right. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Decision made, get on with it. Well, the pop side, unusually, beside the family stand, is absolutely packed. The centre of it is not, as a mistake there by Weiss for a change, but he goes back and brings down Lewis Collins. And Torquay United have a free kick just on the semicircle in the Boreham Wood, half on the edge of it. Brett McGavin will look for movement in front of him. Dan Martin makes a run but isn't spotted. Of course, the other thing is that unless, ah, here we go, uh, unless they take a minute and then send the big men up from the back, United have never got an option yeah. to really stick the ball into the box in the air because they have no no proper centre yeah. forward. And then after them all gone up, McGavin plays it short to Archer, who plays it out of De Silva, but De Silva's going to need to create his own space. Finds Archer, but he's going to be forced back to De Silva. Can they get it in now? No, they can't. De Silva tries to go past Batson, but truthfully, we could have seen that coming. Batson gets in there easily enough. And he's just waiting to be fouled by the silver, but gives it back to the keeper and cleared the way there. And it's going to be Brett McGavin that picks it up. And he just about gets it back to Archer. He comes back to Booth, right footed, dink down the line, looking for Lapsley. Good ball by Booth. Lapsley gets it. His attempt to play the silver and is blocked, but Archer then is beaten by Batson. And St Albans will have a throw in 25 yards from their own goal, which they take quickly to Hoddle. And Top and bottom comes out was, to by the way, United sent all the big men up for that yep. original. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> never I'd, got the ball in the box. <laughs> absolutely. Nice little give and go there as James comes up. Thomas is going to try and get back, but James gets in front of him, dinks it in there looking for Jeffers, but Halstead reads that. And Tomlinson truthfully looked like he was wearing what, two ton weights on his feet there, to be honest, the way that James got past him, who's not the fastest either, to be fair. But Halstead has got a chance to clear it upfield. Well, not a chance, he will clear it upfield for United. One ball goes up, it's going to be looked for the head of Collins, but that's easily won there by number six, Michael Clark. Because from a tactical point of view, St Albans don't really have to do anything no. now, do they? They're, 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 they're three up. I, I um, think they'll win this at the moment. They can sort of take their foot off the pedal and... and I think that's sort of Torquay's best chance at the moment, bit, to be honest. You know? It's uh, I never thought I'd sit here at playing more, Dave, and say if St Albans don't try too hard as Bradash tries to get in behind there, but again, the ball just breaks us in Albans way, and eventually it's dinked through by Rosulo, and Tomlinson plays it through McGavin with two men round him, over to Thomas here on the left-hand side, that's better from Thomas to Tom Lapsley, who is offside. Oh, I did think that was no, tight. No, neither did I, but again, Dave, it's... If he is offside, we'll have to assume the right there. The linesman is indicating that he came back from an offside position. And here's position, another long so. ball catches United out, and here comes Weiss up the right-hand side. He's got Jeffers in the middle, slows it down. He's got Rosulo behind him, who he finds at right edge of the box of Torquay. Back to Weiss, back to James, back to Weiss. But United have got men back. Weiss cuts inside one man, plays a little dig ball through to Rosulo. A chance for get the ball in the box. If it's an Albans, it's going to break to James, and he goes in again. But Tomlinson this time gets behind in front of that, sorry and it goes out for a corner kick and we need another ball on the park 51 played it playing more Torquay United now St Albans 3 probably what 100, 200 behind that goal there Dave in the community yeah whenever United 
uh, when Everson Orban's attack with any real intent and get in, in and around scary the box, awesome. it yeah. just looks scary, doesn't Absolutely. it? it it's, yeah. uh, they look as if they're capable of opening Ian, that, 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 that young United defence up at almost any time. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be a corner from the right-hand side, Rosillo. It's a low one to the edge of the box. James in acres of space. He's going to try a left foot shot, but he can't keep it on target. Nowhere near. And United, well, again, Dave, it's just they're switching off everywhere and whatever. It's, uh, I mean, they've started the half a little bit better, for want of a better word, but truthfully couldn't have started with it any worse. That's, uh, but it's going to be a goal kick for Halstead, and as I said, most of the pop side, the the noisemakers, if you were, from the centre are now down standing beside the family stand. We can only assume that the reason for that is there's another ball strike come through, but good block there by Thomas. Stop Rosullo getting forward, it comes to James, and it's now with Rosullo on the right-hand side. Back to James and Dan Martin needs to close him down and it forces him back to Hoddle and United's pressing for once pays off a little bit and it's all the way back with Michael Johnson in goal but he just dinks it forward to Partington and he finds Hoddle on his left foot finds a on well not absolutely no chance was he offside there Dave I watched that categorically and the linesman has switched off there there was no way Banton was offside there but the linesman says he was. I watched that exactly, and he was definitely onside behind Booth there. One or two supporters behind us agreed with you. Paul, yeah, he was 100% onside, Dave. Yeah, I actually yeah. watched it. There I, you I, go. We can all make mistakes. Yeah, that yeah, linesman yeah. may have got that one wrong. But, uh... Well, as you know, my good lady sits just beside us, Dave, so if you ever tell her I make a mistake, say it was only one. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and then it's back with Booth. Long ball forward, but easily cleared there by Clark. And Torquay United will have a throw in as the Suns decided to come out, which Mr. Mark Halstead won't appreciate. Mr. Clark dispatches the ball over the pop side into Marnham Road. He does. Well, Mark Halstead's going to need a cap of some denomination yep, because the is. Suns just decided to come out and blind everybody, including us to an extent, Dave. Or it will do in a few minutes. I wonder if Halstead remembered, remembered his, uh, his cap. Uh, here's Tom Lapsley trying to get the ball across. It's deflected there, and Torquay United have a corner. We have played just over eight minutes of the second half here at Plainmore. Welcome along to BBC Radio Devon Sport, but unfortunately, if you're of a yellow persuasion, it is not good news as it's currently Torquay United nil, St Albans 3. And that's a fair reflection on the game, at least, as here comes the corner from the right hand side. Up go the heads, but it's over everybody. Booth just about misses it. It'll come to Collins on the left edge of the box, looking to try and get something in there. Back to Dan Martin, a little bit of space. Martin comes back out to Collins, though, runs into the box. Martin, but Collins slows it down. Right footed cross into the edge of the box. And a header comes in by Partington and just over his own bar. And Torquay United have another corner, and arguably Torquay's best chance, if you like, Dave. Yeah, there was the one for. Collins earlier yeah. on in the first half and then Ash pulled a very good save from Johnson but Johnson was nowhere near that one came off his own defender what, six inches over the bar if that yeah. corner to the goals, left hand it's side going to be in taken swinger. by McGavin I think that is I, thought a little I think bit. I'd rather have him on the edge oh, of the correct, box, absolutely yeah. I was <laughs> literally about to say that Dave but it, a very heavily populated six yard box so I'm guessing this is where he'll be putting this or doing his best to put it there here it comes, right foot McGavin that is pathetic to say the least and it comes back out to Archer he's got Dan Martin and support behind him Martin tries to get across in but immediately closed down again by the St Albans defence and Martin and McGavin eventually get it back and it comes back to Callum Thomas just inside the St Albans half over to Tomlinson now he tries to come forward dinks it down the left hand side looking for Archer nice little ball back to Martin can Martin get a good cross in it's just wait wait oh, oh. don't know why the keeper never come out and Partington puts it behind and Torquay United have another corner Ash made a run to get onto that ball at the near post and then and then stopped yep. and the defender had a clear view of it actually must kicked it behind for another corner but why Ash stopped yeah. when he made on that run to the near post I don't know yeah, yeah good point Dave it's going to be McGavin again attack from deeper this is a better one and up go the heads well headed away it comes to De Silva on the edge of the box but the referee has pulled that back for a free kick there well given there was three St Albans players around him and only one Torquay player he's done well to spot that but took the pressure off St Albans a little bit there is well pressure being the loosest terminology I can use there 
Well, I'm sure Dave have got a lot of talkies. It's an Auburn team cruise control here, aren't they? Yeah, United absolutely. United are doing okay and they've created a couple of chances in the last few minutes, but it's not as if it's no. we're not in Alamo territory. No, or absolutely like not that. even close as Tomlinson does well, turns away from Jeffers. Long diagonal ball looking towards Silva, which she gets little Splattering applause there, the silver picks it up, he's heading back inside though, and he's now got Dan Martin and Ash just in front of him, but Ash needs to stay onside as Martin left edge of the box and then just plays an over hit pass and well there's an old when saying you're off, you're off, Dave. There's lots of old sayings in football, but there's another old saying is that usually the first option is the best option. Mm -hmm. And the first option for Dan Martin then was to chip the ball to the far post where Collins and Brad Ash were waiting, and he instead tried to uh, uh, knock a little cleverer pass uh, uh, to put somebody in behind. And, of course, overhit it, went behind for a goal kick, and it was gone, and he jumped up and down in frustration. And... You know, in other words, do the first thing it's in Absolutely, front of you yeah. and do yeah, it absolutely. well. Absolutely, but when the confidence goes, Dave, so does the, the thinking, shall we say, and everything's safe and, you know, don't want to make mistakes. I understand it to an extent, but listen, they've got nothing to lose. They might as well go for it. Dan Martin actually is one of the... Braver. One of the most wholehearted players yeah, yeah. in the United team. I think he's a decent left back in the making, still quite young. Well, Ollie Tomlinson completely misreads that, and Weiss gets in in front of him, but Thomas does well to get back. And between Thomas and I think, Tomlinson. I think, I think Tomlinson could be in trouble here. Yeah, so they are, Dave. That, that was a clear pullback, and I tell you what, it if, was. It, if a linesman's seen that, that would potentially have not just been a yellow card, Dave. It would have been a red, although Thomas is covering back there, well I think the linesman's actually given the free kick against, I think against. he's got away with that so they are Dave to be honest with you he definitely pulled back Jeffers there but oh it's a rugby, it was a, it was a two arms around the waist job mm -hmm. yeah and the uh, St Albans uh, <laughs> backroom team are making that very well, clear and, and so they should to be honest but we'll talk he'll take any little luck going Tomlinson's at the moment has got away with one there he has and then Van Dan Martin just inexplicably gives it away and Tomlinson again look at him again Jeffers well, I, I think oh, Tomlinson, Tomlinson has got, got hold of Jeffers' shirt there. And he's given it the other and way. He's given it the other way. Uh, well, for any St Albans fans listening, good afternoon wow. and welcome to you. But your striker there, Here Sean Jeffers, has been wronged not once but twice. As a whole, the for club Archer. captain is on for Ethan Archer. Well, Oh, he was at the Chippenham game, Dave, and I have to take into account the conditions there that night, but Asa Hall looked to me like a man who wasn't fit, or he, he, he just looked like he was doing everything at half speed, so to speak, so let's hope he's getting back to fitness. He is a fantastic player, or has been a fantastic player. Obviously, it's hard to judge this season whether he can reach those levels again. Hopefully, from United's point of view, he can. Well, he's 36 years old. Uh, I think I think I'm... He's, I don't think he's 37 yet. If no. he is, I um, apologise. Um, and everybody, a lot of people have talked, haven't they, about, oh, his legs are gone, his legs are gone. Look, at, at 36 years old in midfield, yeah. uh, your legs are entitled to go a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, yeah. The, different, the point is that if you've got some people around you who can do your running for you, it doesn't show up as much. Yeah, and absolutely. the fact is, Asa Hall has had nobody around him until little Will Jenkins arrived. Uh, uh, you, you, you stick, if you can imagine a United mm. midfield with uh, Connor Lemonay Evans, Will Jenkins Davies, Adam Randall around Hall. Yeah. He won't look too slow then no, because absolutely. he won't have to do the running. As again, Weiss gets in in front of Tomlinson, he's heading up right on edge of the box, miscontrols that a little bit, but he will get it across. But Tomlinson just about gets it away. Then Booth completely mishits it as a chance for Banton, but he's been forced on the back foot. Comes back again to Smith, looking for Banton out there. Banton slips, but he will manage to keep that in just about. And Tom Lapsley, as usual, gets in and it breaks nicely for St Albans. Can they get the cross in? But they choose not to back to Banton yeah. and again well he's beginning to maybe overplay it a little bit there Banton but he gets it into Rosullo and now James is in space on his right hand side here in acres of space right hand edge of the box he's going to get a low ball across he can get a low ball across he's a big chance well defended there eventually by Booth and truthfully Weiss should have done better there huge let off for Torquay United corner St Albans good block by Booth Austin Booth to get the ball behind for a corner they opened United up big time then didn't they pass 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 eventually got a spare man in down the right hand side cross into the middle United couldn't clear and here another near miss yep, Hoddle's out there he gives it back to Rasul I think it is but two in there by Dylan De Silva 
<coughs> and Bowery will let that go for another corner. We have played 61 minutes here at Plainmore. The one thing this United side haven't got is 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 two gears, mm -hmm. and at the moment, St Albans look like they've got about three, don't they? Yeah. No, uh, they every time they they step it up. United look in trouble. I think most United fans might think they have got two years. They've neutral and reverse, unfortunately, but it's... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I didn't mean that, but no, I know <laughs> you, know, you, mean. you know what I mean. I know what you mean, yeah. It's, uh, well, as it stands, it's going to be... To be fair, this half United have been in it a little bit more, but uh, as, you, as you alluded to there, Dave, I think that St Albans have not been going full throttle on this half, but they will have another corner down the left-hand side. Brett McGavin just nods it behind, and it will be... Giorgio Rossolo, the scorer of the second goal, who will take it with the right foot. Quite a few men in the box for St Albans. Here comes a corner, up go the heads, it's Asa Hall that gets it away. And Collins, Still the best header of a ball in yeah, either box for the absolutely. goals. And Collins does manage to keep that and goes forward looking for Tom Lapsley, but he's not going to jump anybody in the air to be fair. But United at least force St Albans onto the back foot and can Dan Martin get in there? He can, but he just couldn't get it to a Torquay United player. And another one forward and Booth gets up and wins it in front of Rosillo. But it breaks again to Banton and he's got Rosillo on the left-hand side. Rosillo, but he's just... The, the St Albans are almost playing at 80% here at the moment. Nice little ball to Banton down the left-hand side. He gets it back onto the right foot, comes back to Rosillo on the edge of the box. Again, trying to be too clever, claims he was fouled, but now a chance for United to break into Silva up over the halfway line looking for movement which he's played it too far in front of Lewis Collins and to be fair though Michael Johnson came out and revved that if De Silva looked up he might have tried to ch chip him from there but still a poor pass wasn't yeah, it terrible. by De Silva <laughs> poor, straight forward as McGavin then tries to find I think that was Ash down the right hand side but at the moment we're just playing a little bit of tennis and eventually it'll go out 16 yards from United's own goal down this left hand side here for a throw in to the home side, Torquay United now St Albans 3 here on BBC Radio Devon Sport and myself and Dave Thomas are struggling to find the positives of how United can change this game, Dave, no, I don't fair? think I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think there are any no. I, I, I can't honestly think that they are um, pride, just do one. Well, they're, 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 they're damage limitation now. Well, there's a banner has come up over on the pop side, and it says, I'll quote word for word, where's your pride, question mark, just do one. Well, I'm not sure if that's directed exactly to Gary Johnson or <laughs> the board in general, Dave, but well, clearly... A couple of weeks ago on a, on a, on a, a fans forum... Uh, that they, they repeated, uh, Gary Johnson and the CEO, that he was going nowhere, yep. uh, that the board had full confidence in him, etc, 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 et et yeah. well. and um, that's where we are at the moment, uh, 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 how bad it has to get before... Oh. A, a, a change, obviously, comes, Dave. Uh, f from from whoever, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Gary Johnson has had a wonderful career. He's mm -hmm. he's a a, 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 a good ma a top manager. He's yeah. pro proved it over the years. And were it not for the last two seasons, he would still yeah. be in credit here. Why well, coming forward on the left hand edge of the box? But Booth does well to read that and doesn't let it go out and after doing well it's now back to Jeffers on the left edge of the box he's got Bantam James and acres of space over on this right hand side Dan Martin needs to be wary of that it comes to Jeffers low ball across good challenge there by Thomas clears it but only back to Jeffers now to Bantam again again he's trying to find his man behind him Smith who eventually does but United a little bit more organised but Smith does well not once but twice and it's now back out to Bantam on the left hand side Jeffers trying to find Bantam but good challenge there by Brett McGavin just a passing drill at the moment. Yeah, for, absolutely. Uh, and De Silva now a chance to build for United up over the halfway line. He's got Collins down the right-hand side. Brad Ash in the box makes the early run, but Collins didn't have a space to find him, to be fair. He's now got Asa Hall. De Silva's outside. It finds De Silva on the right-hand edge of the box. He's now inside the box. De Silva looking for space. Tries a low shot, but it's just wide of the post. Dave, no a, end product. a couple no of weeks ago, uh, obviously, I, I was at the interview that Gary Johnson done downstairs, which, for what whatever reason the club decided to emit from their 
their production like you know they cut out the bit when he talked about the fans and I'm not trying to take sides here but I think when it was the, the BBC printed the interview Dave I'm sure you read it and when you read the words in black and white it had a slightly different meaning than what Gary was actually saying to be honest I did feel a little bit sorry for him there because I think that what he was actually trying to get across was that he cares about the club as again United trying to come forward Brad Ash edge of the box tries a low shot but it's into the hands of Michael Johnson yeah I think Gary was I kind of I don't want to blame the club I think they either need to play the interview and they've got the context that was in but he, he went on about the fans a little bit and shouting you know we want Gary out with, rather than getting behind the team and I think his words were taken a little bit out of context however when a fan of the club that's paying their money and they see stuff like that it never done him any favours either did it it's, uh, I think when you're struggling and things aren't going well the last thing you want to do is start having a go at the fans is start commenting on the fans the fans come along yeah. look Tork Torquay's gates have held up incredibly well yeah, uh, uh, in the circumstances their away support speaks for itself Super. the last section of this club that is you know that needs questioning really in these circumstances is the supporters and you just don't do it you, 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 you don't you don't do it Gary Johnson does care about this club hugely I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I know that for a fact yeah, so they are, of, course he, of course he does but uh, you know it's not been working this season no 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 no, that, no that, absolutely that, that's, yeah. that, that's the that's the top and bottom of it and um, no, Tom Lapsley trying it, to drive it, forward had his shot pulled there by number four and I tell you what we're seeing the, you know, the the, the, the the gradual summing of, you know, the. the, the well, I tell you what, Dave. What's the right phrase? It's all coming together this afternoon, or yeah, not? As yeah, it, yeah, or yeah. not as it were. Well, Smith know. there, Lapsley was driving forward, and Smith has pulled back his shot there, Dave. The referee's pulled it back for a free kick. I think he's. A little bit fortunate that that's not been deemed as a yellow card, which would have been his second silly play I think from it Smith. Was probably too deep in midfield. Well, wasn't yeah, it? possibly. If it had been 15 yards further forward, but here is Brett McGavin. He will be taking a right-footed free kick from approximately 40 yards, dinked in towards the box, and because it heads and Collins gets in at the back post, and rather than putting it back across, he skies it up there like a sun wedge shot. As we're about to see a substitution, had, to, had to get on the end of that properly, didn't he? Yeah, had to read that better. Well, it's going to be number 12 coming off. Going on, I beg your pardon. Sorry, coming off. Weiss, and he will be replaced by Jake, I kid you not, Berger. 68th minute. 68 Berger minute. for Weiss, and I think Weiss has been Sir Norman City's player of the match this afternoon. Yep, United have agree. never picked him up Indeed. all afternoon. And uh, he's caused all sorts of problems. Sorry, uh, just just and going. They're probably just giving him a bit of a breather. Yeah, just going back to that Gary Johnson thing, as I said, Dave. I think he was a little bit misrepresented, but maybe perhaps, as I said, if the club had released the interview, they would have seen more of the context it was in. But as you rightly said, it's sometimes things are better left unsaid, isn't it? But he was shown Good passion. Point. He Good was point, just shown Paul. passion more than yeah. United through Dan Martin will look to try and build Asa Hall's got a little bit of space in midfield immediately closed down decent ball there but well got out Brad Ash gets in there but Dan Martin can't get it and here comes Jeffers going up the right hand side but the ball goes out I, I don't think there's any way back in terms of the fans for Gary Johnson to be honest with you Dave it's, uh, but as, as you, you pointed out on the fans forum the club couldn't be more categorical and they basically, if you recall the, the Wrexham game here last season when relegation was confirmed, the first thing Gary Johnson came over and said in the post-match press conference was let everybody know I'm staying. So the club have clearly got faith in him. But how much will that be tested after today? As Brett McGavin comes forward or tries to come forward, but well, it'll be it, one win in eight games, won't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, which is just simply not good enough. To, uh, no, I mean, it's it not even close. Not, 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 it's, and, it, and it's not remotely good enough for a club like Torquay. It, it, you know, this is a full-time club in a part-time division, yeah. and you know, this is a, a, a very proud club. I know that's a phrase that's often used in football as well. It's been through a lot. Yep. Uh, and uh, punched above its weight many times over the years. Yep, so but, we'll just but this is not 
what the supporters of this club Absolutely. expect. No, or deserve. Uh, to be, a bit ahead, tennis going on. It's eventually with Ash down the left-hand side. Has attempted cross. We'll see Tom Lapsley just let it go out for a corner kick. And we have got exactly 20 minutes of normal time to go here. Up go Booth, up go Tomlinson. Only young Callum Thomas will stay back. And Brett McGavin has got another chance to put the ball into the box here to see if United can create anything. Arguably the best chance has been a header over his own bar by Partington this half. Uh, here comes McGavin's corner kick with the right foot again in towards the near post and that is just truly abysmal by McGavin. He doesn't even keep it in play, it hits the side net now the goal at the side he's on and St Albans will have a goal kick and that, Dave, if you ever want to see an example of a team playing with no confidence, watch this game. Well, McGavin is a quality player, he's a great striker of the ball as we've all seen. Uh, any one of his six goals this season will end up as goal of the season and he can't stick a corner into the uh, anywhere else than the, than the, the, than the side netting. Mm. What's going on? <coughs> Asa Hulk trying his best to get involved. Him and Lapsley, a little give and go. They now try to find Martin, but good reading there. And here comes St Albans. It's dinked forward to an, ons no, an offside. Jeff oh, I don't know. Well, again, I don't know what that linesman's watching. And even their, their assistant manager or stand-in manager is pointing and saying he played them on. I Absolutely. thought he did. But it's now out with Dylan De Silva on the right-hand side. Banton looks to be struggling to get back a little bit. Low ball in by De Silva. Goes a St Albans way. Tom Lapsley does well enough. And eventually buys Torquay United a throw in midway inside the St Albans half down the right-hand side. Which I, will I be can't remember the last really telling cross that Dylan De Silva has delivered. Mm. Uh, I, I, there may well have been one, and if so, I... Apologise. I he, scored, he scored a couple of quite spectacular goals cutting inside, yeah. but he's a right winger and his job is to take his full back on and get some cross. I actually in. thought he was United's best player away at Chippenham, Dave, but that I was as much about day, his yeah. work rate and his effort rather yeah. than anything of, of quality, you know, and it was one of those games. I think, I think it, to, to be fair as well, United are going through a patch where they don't seem to be getting any breaks, but that kind of tends to happen when you're not doing everything or most things correctly sort of thing you know when it starts going wrong it goes wrong spectacularly True. but I mean when at Chippenham I personally I, I, I watched their manager's interview after it and I, I began to wonder whether he'd been drinking before he'd done it he, he thought his team deserved to win and I'm thinking really mate I was like it wasn't even that close I thought I thought United should have won that one but I'll come back to the old dreaded quality word when you've got a lack of it this was it tends to happen as Dan Martin tries to get Ashen down the left Left hand side, but I, I read that before that even went there, as did Bowery, and he clears it. And it's now back with Booth, who's almost getting himself in a tangle there, but it goes all the way back to Halstead. We have got 17 minutes just over to play here. You're listening to BBC Radio Devon Sport, and we are currently watching Torquay United nil, St Albans 3. And I think both myself and my colleague Dave Thomas agree that the only reason it's only three is because St Albans have taken their foot off the gas a little bit in this half. Asa Hall has won nearly every header he's gone for since he's come on the pitch, yep. which is a nice uh, sign. Plymouth Argyle, 15 minutes plus additional time away from getting their first away win of the season. As Bowery just about gets that back, it's Swansea 0, Plymouth 1, Morgan Whitaker, the scorer there. Exeter City 0, Bristol Rovers 1, 13 to go there. Aguilera's 15th minute strike separates the sides. There's a break in play here. Yeah, he's went the, down uh, again. Jo no, the first he's perfectly OK. Yep. Jo Johnson has gone down. Azer Hall sort of tripped over the top of him sort of thing. And Johnson immediately made out that he got a head mm. injury, which forces the referee to stop play. Yep. Tom Lapsley's gone up to him and said, come on, what's the matter with you? And, and Johnson is almost out of embarrassment saying... But he clipped my head, but he yeah. clipped my head. So I've just run through from National League South, scores Avely now, Worthing 2, Worthing on good form, Bath nil, Eastbourne nil, Braintree 3, Dover nil, Farnborough 1, Dartford 1, Hampton 1, Truro 1, Havant nil, Chelmsford 1, another top form side, Maidstone 2, Yeovil nil, 17 to go there, Slough 2, Weston nil, Tonbridge 2, Chippenham nil, 3 nil here, Welling nil, Taunton nil, and Weymouth 2, Hemel Hempstead 2. Torquay United not just in danger of slipping out of playoffs, they're in danger of slipping into mid-table mediocrity. Well, and don't forget they got Mason away Tuesday night. Well, I and was Slough here next Saturday. I was going to mention Dave when you mentioned about the return on and the we fixtures. We all know what Mason have been up to this season. Absolutely. And are they still beating uh, Yeovil at the moment? Two 0 It's uh, well. <laughs> 
It's not only that Torquay didn't pick up points, Dave, but when you look at the standard of the opponent, it, it was a decent run of fixtures as the Collins comes at the right hand edge of the box, thinks it in towards the back post, but it's too hard. I should keep that, and he's got Dan Martin behind him, but chooses not to use him. Eventually, he does when Martin's closed down again. Dave, I don't know how many times you need to say it make the pass first time, not the second time, exactly. and it changes the, the tempo of the game. Now, Ash has got it again, looking to drive his way into the box, which he just about does. He's going to try a shot, but straight into the hand. Of Johnson Weak. and absolutely no danger for him there. United now St. Albans. Yeah, all I'm saying is, is uh, they've got what Mason away Tuesday, Slough home, Taunton away. Mm-hmm. Um, United have this will be one defeat, uh, one win in eight games. Their record against the top half, the top t- 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 teams Papa's is dreadful, mm-hmm. absolutely awful. Um, uh, yeah, here comes St. Albans coming forward. And I don't know what he was trying to do there. That was. The Young substitute burger, burger yeah. 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 He's not on the same wavelength as the others yet. I promise I will try and resist any puns before the end of the game. Can't guarantee it though. As the ball's back with Halstead. We're about to see the introduction of Harun Hamid as well. As Asa Hall, as you mentioned, Dave wins another little header and Dan Martin does get on it left hand side comes back into the edge of the box to Collins but again tries to be way 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 too clever and Bowery just makes him look like a fool to be perfectly honest and St Albans clear that up but they've pinned themselves into their own box but good play by them and now here's a chance for Hoddle to break forward for them again Tomlinson holding Jeffers but he's letting Hoddle run all the way to the edge of the box he's got support at the back post and it comes in and the shot comes in hits the underside of the bar comes to Jeffers and cleared off the line it was a substitute there Should have been Jake four. Burger who hits the underside of the bar good break away by St Albans but the United get away with that one absolutely did United like a kipper in the, deep in their own corner United players not playing quickly enough and doing the first thing they eventually caught them on the counter attack hodled down the right hand side crossed it to the far post who was it hit the bar? Burger yeah there you go United completely undone well, Jeffers had a chance to get his second there as well, Dave, but Tomlinson, to be fair, cleared it off the line, although I would say that Jeffers maybe should have done a little bit better, but... Well, it's embarrassing as a shout coming from somebody near us. I don't know if our microphone's picked that up. And, well, it's silent now. We've got one person. I can't see where he's sitting. Dave shouting out a variety of things. So far, his language hasn't been unbroadcastable, to be fair, but it's embarrassing was one of the things he shouted there. And, truthfully, it's hard to argue. As we're about to see yes. another substitution. One of the worst days, I would say, in mm-hmm. Tokyo United's history. Well, we're about to I see that's a sort of a Nathan Carlyle coming on. I'm pretty sure he's a centre-half, so... Oh, here we come, is it an injury? I remember watching the what supporters used to call the dark days when uh, when Dave Webb was in charge, when United only stayed in the Football League because there was no automatic promotion or yeah. relegation then. They, after 57 years without apl- having to apply for re-election, they had to do it twice in two years under yeah. Webb, and everybody always used to say that that was the worst Yep, Nathan Carlyle in the club's history. Yep, but, sorry, uh, Dave. Nathan Carlyle has come on to replace Michael Clark. This has got to be straight swap there, I think, and it's going to be a throw-in in front of their own bench, which will be taken by Jack James, a man who's caused a lot of problems for Turkey, or a man who Turkey have allowed to cause a lot of problems, might be nearer the mark. And he's taking his time over the throw. As the wind picks up here, it's blown from left to right as we sit here on the bench, and Jeffers again, and Tomlinson, it's almost like he's asking to get a yellow card, but McGavin, about three step overs, finds Dan Martin, has long ball looking for Ash, and that might break to Ash, it does break to Ash, but he's got two around him, but the referee has given a free kick there, Ash asking for a card, I think it's going to be... Is it the substitute, Carlisle, who's just come on? I actually thought Bowery was the main protagonist there, to be honest, Dave, but perhaps I've... I must say, I, I, the referee's getting his card out for only the second time this afternoon. I, I, I suppose that it was sort of nearly last man, I'm not quite sure. I'm not even sure that Brad Ash even had the ball under control, no. to be perfectly honest with you. But anyway, it's a free kick to United and a booking. 
Well, yeah, as a, a Brett McGavin, Brett McGavin is, Dave, is it, are we going to get something to cheer no, the no. locals up with? The referee's just made him pull the ball back yeah. another two or three yards, and I'm afraid even for... I'm sure he'll have a go from here, but... Uh, I'm talking, I'm, what, 33, 35 yeah, yards I, here? I think even that range may be a little bit too much for yeah. McGavin's considerable... Uh, Technique powers power. of shooting. Yeah. yeah. We've just got under t over 10 minutes ago, well, almost on button 10 minutes ago, Brett McGavin will take this free kick eventually. The referee will the wall are about 22 yards from goal, so I would say 32 yards roughly. Here comes Brett McGavin with the right foot. It's a good one, but it's straight into the arms of the keeper, Johnson. Good well, shot on target, but yeah, uh, well. always, always uh, a big ask from there. As more and more fans leave. Well, all those people over on the pop side, Dave, that went down there, they've, they seem to have dispersed, but I don't know to where because they've not got back to where they're originally standing, so I'm not sure if they've left or not. But Well, let's hope they're not assembling yeah. outside the ground. Yeah, here comes back down the left hand there. side. It's a big ball into Burger, left hand edge of the box. He's got two men in the middle, one of them's Jeffers. Thomas gets in, it breaks to Jeffers, tries to clip it off the line again by Thomas. Not well, he's got, managed to get in there. Thomas again tried to clear it off the line, but it's for the second time today. Rasulo and he has made it in the 81st minute Torquay United now St Albans 4 Caught on the counter again good attack down the left hand side uh, the number 11 Zane Banton has caused all sorts of problems eventually I'm not sure who it was delivered the final cross uh, it was Jeffers they, they, they survived the first shot didn't they uh, did that hit the bar, the first one? No, uh, or Rousseau, blocked. yeah, yeah, yeah blocked. Thomas, uh, it Thomas cleared the off the line. That's and then it, so that's it. Th Thomas cleared the first one off the line, but Rasulo was there to head it into the roof of the net. And what we thought was almost inevitable at half-time, the way it was going, it's taken until the 81st, 82nd minute for it to happen, but... Uh, um, uh, St Albans have got their, their fourth goal and Talk United nil, St Albans City four surely it can't get any worse than this but <laughs> it might do yeah. well Hamid is about to replace Banton well to be honest I, th I feel a wee bit for Thomas there uh, yep. Dave not Dave Thomas, but Carl Thomas. Yeah. It's a feel a wee bit for him He's there. He managed okay. to get He's the done okay since he yeah. He managed to get the first one off the line. Yeah. But the second one, to be fair to Rosulo, he headed it at a height which made it difficult for him to get his leg up. He tried to knee it off the line and it just went in the net. Four 0 possibly. Well, the second half's been a bit more even, but in truth, after the first half, I think David, that's only because St yeah, Albans have been I, in third gear. Yeah, they? absolutely. I don't know. And here is Thomas again, plays it forward, looking for Asa Holt. It breaks to Dan Martin, tries to come inside, but immediately outnumbered, and eventually United might get it. They do get it. Brad Ash and Collins, but a good tackle there by Bowery. And Brad Ash down the left-hand side, does well to get past one, tries to drive into the box, goes down, no free kick. Too much traffic there to get through anyway. And eventually just in front is here as more and more fans are leaving, playing more. Thomas has a throw which he takes quickly to Collins back to Thomas. I'm not really sure he wanted that. But there it goes, a hopeless punt forward and Hoddle's got it again and now he's looking for movement and he finds it through Burger. He's got support with the substitute Hamid down the left-hand side. But Hamid doesn't keep it in, but he will win a throw in. Well, Dave, I've run out of space in my notebook. What are the chances <laughs> that, that St Albans have had today, to be honest? But... It's been very one-sided yeah. in, in real terms. United have had their spells with the ball and, 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 a, and, a, and a bit more pressure, but St Albans have been containing them with, with you know, comfortably, yeah. I think you'd have to well, say. There's another chance under the box. They can't just get it. Halstead, and you have Tomlinson. to ask yourself as well, has Michael Johnson made... Uh, a serious save all afternoon. Brett, they Brett McGarvin one street and his hands two yeah, minutes ago. The, 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 United did hit the bar with one, but uh, and, uh, and no, no, he had to make one good save, didn't he? Uh, from well, uh, first Lewis half. Collins. Lewis Collins first half. Yes, in yeah. fairness to him, but that's been about it. Yeah. Uh, and even when United have had the ball and been on top territorially, uh, they've soaked up, if you want to call that pressure, uh, very simply. And every time they've looked like going up a gear in attack. 
they've looked capable of opening United up almost at will. Yeah. And uh, well, I have to say, Dave. Uh, listen, I know we're here with more of a torquey United slant on things, but I, I'd like to think that I'm reasonably fair at times. And I have to say, St Albans have played really, really well today. I don't want to think that Torquay are only losing four now because Torquay are rubbish. St Albans have played pretty well. Yeah. Although the the what I just said there does also come into play as well. United have just been pretty clueless today, as Bowery for some reason takes that away from the goalkeeper's hands. Even Tom Lapsley getting in there, he can do nothing to affect it. That so little chip ball by Asa Hall was a perfectly routine, the sort of ball that a midfield player is going to make in those yep. situations. And nobody up front, yep. Ash, Collins, etc., was anticipating yep. that Absolutely. ball to get in on to get, to get to get in on it. They reacted too late. Yeah, but they don't exactly. As McGavin's a little bit of space, he dinks it over to Booth, who must wonder what he's walked into at the moment. But he's got Collins in front of him down the right hand side, makes the overlap, holds in a little bit of space behind him. Collins comes inside, but again, St Albans organisation off the ball is clever. Again, Collins tries to be too smart, concedes possession, and now St Albans are going to break away, and it's going to be, I think, Rasulo there. But a good tackle at last by Collins, and eventually. Uh, he just plays it off the solo and Torquay United have a throw in. And the referee, well, for the first time he's become animated today, he's forcing Dan Martin to go back about three inches to take that throw in. Well, he, he, he's just saying to him, it's in your heart. Yeah, I know. And, and, and I think Martin must accept that. That's where the ball yeah. went out of play. We've got four minutes plus any additional time, which from Torquay United's point of view, we'll be hoping is as little as possible. There's another long aimless punt goes forward, easily headed away by James Collins, does win a header there, but it can't fault your top key player eventually, Asa Hall's got it, Asa Hall now left edge of the box, tries to look for the runner Tom Lapsley, he finds Tom Lapsley, turns one way, then the other Lapsley eventually gets out to Dan Martin, he can't get across him, it's a low cross, cleared away there, I thought that might have hit a hand for a split second, but I don't think it did, and here comes Rasulo coming forward, and Hamid the substitute's going to offer support and energy down the left hand side, is Rasulo going to use him eventually? Eventually he does two in the box for St Albans, but Hamid comes back and just strokes it back to Rasulo on a hat trick, of course. Should he get another chance? But that's quite poor from St Albans on that occasion. The United come forward and another ball going forward goes absolutely nowhere, and Carlisle will take that all day. And St Albans will again try to to build back to Bowery just inside his own half and out to James on his right hand side movement in front of him from Hoddle to the right hand edge of the box but Tomlinson goes back with Hoddle but Hoddle might get there he dinks it across but there's nobody there and Booth just nods it back to Halstead and Halstead looks for movement but even he knows that the team in front of him the shoulders are drooped nobody's really wanting to take charge of anything here three minutes just under to go Torquay United nil, St Albans four. Well, there's a pretty good football team sitting in the grandstand. <laughs> not available to Gary Johnson at the moment, but I'm afraid the one out on the pitch is not remotely good enough. Not even close to uh, not, not all the players are poor players, of course they're not, but you can't take teams on in any division, especially one that Gary Johnson has actually been talking up most of this season, saying it's better than the one that... Uh, when they were in it five years ago, I, I don't agree with that. I think <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I, I think the division now is poorer than it was then. But I, I um, agree with that, Dave. Actually, uh, I, but, I genuinely uh, agree with uh, that. But you know, this United team nowhere near good enough. Here comes McGavin looking for movement forward. St Albans just sitting off. He finds Collins, but Collins yet again does nothing of any use and loses it. And Rasulo will get it and look to build for the visitor St Albans again. Hamid on the left hand side, and this time in better space, he's dinked it through to Burger, who is on side edge of the box. Finds Hamid, but again, well, truthfully, St Albans, if I was there, quote, well, he's giving them a round of applause, or I'd be giving them a clip round here. He's attending. <laughs> Well, Dave, two. Let's well, hear the man of the match. Tonight's man of the match is number four, Mr. Tom Lapsley. Well, Tom Lapsley gets man of the match for what I'm not sure, but I would have said that no matter who got man of the match. He, he won't want to win it this afternoon. No, absolutely he not. He won't want to win it. Well, Halstead and Thomas just not doing well enough there, and St Albans get in there, but they can't keep it in. 2,241, including 62 away. Well done to you guys for coming up. It's been a great day for you. But Safe journey back to you. That includes yeah. quite a few.
quite a lot of, of uh, uh, free tickets for community uh, Probably uh, for not community as many groups. as I thought, though, Dave, to be honest. No. I don't think there's much more than 200 behind that I goal. I was talking to George Edwards before the game. He said the actual take-up in terms of, yes, we're coming... And he, said, he always said, well, let's see how many actually, yeah. <laughs> actually arrive. And, and I think we're in that sort of territory. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Tom Lapsley does well to get it out of Dan Martin. We're 30 seconds from the end of normal time here as the ball goes out of Collins. But good tracking back there by James. He's been a very, very good player today, in my opinion. And Brett McGavin, now he's got a chance to build. But St Albans organisation off the ball, possibly a little bit. We've not touched on that too much. They have made it difficult for United. But again, unfortunately, in my opinion, we've seen some pretty dire performances. Lewis Collins being one of them. That's uh, And here he is on the ball. Can he shut me up? As he drives towards him, he just puts it back to Lapsley. Gets it back. There's going to be, I think, that was four additional minutes. And here comes Collins. Tries to dink it through, but instead hits Brad Ash in the face for some bizarre reason. And here comes Hoddle coming forward. I think that was four additional minutes, Dave. I'm pretty sure it was. And Thomas comes out and brings down Hoddle. And Thomas, I think, will pick up a yellow card. I'm not really sure that. Well, I hope deserved. he isn't, but because I think he tried to pull out of that challenge. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> He's... He's actually pulled out of the challenge. Yep. And the player's gone down because of contact being made. I mean, goodness sake. Maidstone 2, Yeovil 1. Yeovil got back in at Havant. 1, Chelmsford 1. We drop points for Chelmsford. Still 3 0. Bath 1, Eastbourne 0. Worthing 2 0. Up. Farnborough 2 1. Up. Uh, Slough winning. I think every result Torquay didn't want today's happened, to be honest, Dave. But then again, they can only affect surprise, their own. Surprise, surprise. Yep. As the ball's played forward, Thompson will shepherd that out for a goal kick. Exeter's still 1-0 down, I believe. It's St James's three minutes into additional time. Plymouth Argyle, two minutes into additional time. Still lead by Morgan Whitaker's first half strike. That will be, be a huge result, result. absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely. Repeating, duplicating. Yep. As United again trying to come forward. Asa Hall tries to dink it forward. Bowery will let that run. But he's well in control of that. Brad Ash, to be fair to him, hasn't stopped all day. But in truth, it could also be argued that he hasn't started all day either. So, so. Brad, Brad Ash is, is, a, is a, a obviously he's United's leading scorer. He's got ten goals this season. But he has to have a, yeah. a target man with him, doesn't he? he yeah, he, absolutely. He, ca he can't absolutely. play on his own. There, he's not strong enough physically. No, agreed. And Rousseau just plays that out. Big pardon. Back to Smith, back out to Hamid there. But St Albans just slowing things down. Of course, centre forwards, top proper target men, and Aaron Jarvis is United. So, you know, they are hard, hard to come by, and much harder than they used to be. But uh, it, it was an awful long time before. Dwayne Afori Achimpong came in, was it not? Mm -hmm. And of course, well, he's here's ended a break up. Into the box from Hamid. It's a low shot across just yeah. wide of the post. So um, I was just looking at a Premier Skip score there, Dave, and Luton Town, who not that long ago were in the National League, are currently drawing four each away at Newcastle. Oh. They've certainly been an interesting team this <laughs> season. So, um, Yeah, I was just saying, you know, it was. Uh, they finally brought Dwayne Afori Achimpong in for the uh, national trophy uh, the the uh, FA trophy tie at mm -hmm. uh, at Hereford and um, he lasted what 3 minutes <laughs> and hasn't even, kicked yeah. a ball and hasn't kicked a ball since Absolutely. so um, well the good news from Torquay United's point of view is as here comes Burger coming through he might get that and Halstead's clearance was fortunate to that there's only just under 50 seconds to go here Torquay United nil St Albans 4 as a scoreline, I don't think too many expected. I think a few people might have thought St Albans would have won today, but not by 40 0 as Lapsley never given up driving forward. He's got De Silva on the right hand side, who he finds. De Silva cuts back inside, thinks the ball in, but straight into the arms of the goalkeeper, and that's pretty much been the story of the day. No problem for St Albans City, who will go away with yet another great result. Well, I don't know Four how nil we, as things stand. Don't know how far it how, so big, I think they were eighth at the start. Well, I don't think they were eighth at the start of play. They could go up to fifth today with us, but this is a real level finder for me, Dave. 
today, unfortunately. Yeah. And unless Torquay United can get most of their better players back, or even one, that's, even some of them, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, obviously uh, Moxie and Jenkins Davis will be back. Uh, they were sus serving one match suspensions today. And the referee puts a whistle to his lips, and we have reached full time here at Plain Moor. And Torquay United have suffered arguably one of the darkest days in their history, or certainly their recent history, as St Albans have come here and truthfully in the first half in particular played them off the park and they've run out clear and deserved winners here as a full-time score is Torquay United nil, St Albans 4 Dave, how did Torquay come back from this? Oh, uh, big question uh, uh, we are led to believe, obviously as we were just saying before the final whistle I'm watching Aaron Downs walk forlornly uh, uh, across the pitch to applaud the supporters that are left on the pop side uh, I, look, here's a, 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 a fine pro as a player and a good coach uh, and Gary Johnson is a good manager his track record proves that uh, uh, with a huge and deep knowledge of the game but this is just the uh, um, uh, 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 accumulation of problems which have beset the club and the team uh, uh, for more than just this season now whether you lay it at the brand at the, at the, at the you know the issue of rec well recruitment is obviously a massive part of football Colin Lee the former United player and CEO always used to say to me Dave recruitment 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 and Tony Boyce the late Tony Boyce also used to say to me the most important part uh, uh, quality of a Torquay United manager being the club where it is was contacts contacts and more contacts and unfortunately uh, United's recruitment at the moment looks as if it's nowhere near good enough uh, you can factor in all the injuries of course you can uh, and uh, you must do that it's it's no good not doing it but uh, <laughs> St Alban City are celebrating the players in front of their little band of supporters at the moment congratulations to them they've completely outplayed United 4-0 yeah. thank you very much for your efforts today Dave it's not a game that anybody of a yellow persuasion has enjoyed here as St Albans have come here and pretty much wiped the floor with Torquay United full time from playing more Torquay now St Albans City 4